Discretion is advised. Happy Thursday. You're listening and or watching Pwncast. This is episode 197. We are in patch 7.3.5. Tonight, guys, we are going to be talking about all things Battle for Azeroth. Yep, yep, yep. We are jumping down that rabbit hole. Wondering if you should pre-purchase? Don't worry. We've got you covered with all the information to help you decide if you want to spend your money. We have that and much, much more, so make sure you guys stay right here. You have crossed into the world of the dead in search of answers. Amongst the Azeroth elite, there's a group that defies convention. A group that stands in the face of trolls and doesn't flinch. A group that strives on unity, trust, and unwavering resolve. A group that eats tacos. For the players, by the players, we bring you. She can start a revolt with a chaos bolt. Bell, the Pwncast Vanguard. With Mind Blast as strong as his ancient knowledge. Remedies, the Argent Lore Master. We bow to no one. We are Legion. We are Pwncast. Welcome back. Uh, guys. Oh, hi. I feel like sometimes I like our intro and then other times I don't like our intro. God, I'm such a girl. <laughs> no, you're neurotic. No, I just wake it's up and different. hate everything one day and then change all the <laughs> That's things. That's what... Oh, <laughs> is that what girls... Is that what neurotic means? Yeah. It's that being a girl. You're, you're something else entirely, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, welcome back. My name is Belle, and with me is my co-host who trolls the most. I got that from a viewer. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Remedies. And tonight we are joined by someone who stalks the World of Warcraft news more than me. Uh, and that would be the data queen herself, Miss Perculia. Hey, everyone. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Really thanks for joining us and talking nerdy and all things, even though you just had like a three hour, <laughs> <laughs> three hour wow at weekly. <laughs> yeah, timing worked out really great because you asked me to be on the show before you knew anything about Alpha, and then um, it's been a big week for Wowheads. Now I have all these Alpha things to talk about. Um, by the way, shoot me the link if uh, so I can tweet the show out. Oh um, yeah, I think. Good. Yeah, my social media gal, because you guys know I'm not. Good You're at so social media. socially inept, like me. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I am a little. Oh, she sure did. Oh, okay. I am my. I'm gonna be blinding right a second as I find the tweet and retweet it out. Like she was even nice and tagged. She's so good at this. I'm so oh, bad. Though. Okay, I'm gonna mute myself and just tweet this out. One sec. So let's talk about. Let's get some quick stuff out of the way while she's multitasking. So for Tuesday's reset, which is gonna be February sixth, uh, the weekly event is the World Quest event. Which, honestly, guys, every single time this is up, I forget to pick up the World Quest event before I go off and do all my daily World Quests. Guys, don't be like me. Be efficient, pick up your quest, then go do your World Quests. Go ahead, Ram. I know, I know you want to say something. Go ahead. I know. No, I, I, I did the same thing. It's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I felt like you right. wanted to troll. <laughs> And also, the PvP brawl is the South Shore versus Torn Mill, which is... I don't know that I've done a lot of them since they were no longer in PTR, so I'm not really sure what that looks like. Yeah. I it's... had a quick note about the world quest, though. So it's just... I was typing when you were doing that. Uh, with the uh, allied races out, um, now's a great time to get your Army of the Light and Argusian Reach uh, world quest done and get some, you know, extra bonus... Uh, uh, quest done for doing 20 of those so oh, yeah especially the people i've seen in the facebook groups world of warcraft oh i can't do this i can't do that you now can guys yeah yep. it's a good so. idea actually i didn't even think about that hmm yep. isn't dark moon fair soon too yeah, yeah we're gonna talk about that in a minute there rem how about you read the show notes hmm? <laughs> well, i know i know it's there i'm just saying i did have that, that in on the that note, note. <laughs> guys i don't even know why i put up with him <laughs> Perculia, do you want a permanent spot on the show? <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I can just have like a Thursday marathon just talking More about More game wow. time for me. I'm fine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Rem, you're irreplaceable. I wouldn't know any lore if it wasn't for Rem. So I, I really oh. can't be mean to him because Whoa. I'm just saying. <laughs> Lycan too, okay? Okay, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Lycan's the man. You're right. Uh, also, love is in the air. Guys, February 1st through February 16th. Go get her done. You need the full... For love achievement 
for the uh, what a long strange trip to get your Violet Proto Drake, which yep. I think I got that last year. Finally, question mark. Uh, so make sure you go in there and get it done. It's also a good time for you to declare your love for people in game, guys. Give them, buy them things, send them a, a lovely rose, have a romantic picnic. Yeah, go on a and, boat ride with them. Yeah, make the sure that them. they are okay with that, though. You just don't. No, you're, you're, you're forgetting the most important thing about love is in the air. Farming that pink rocket and riding it. You're right about that. So with yep. that, you <laughs> for those of you who maybe you're new to World of Warcraft or you're not really sure what's kind of involved here, the main point of this situation is going to be to collect love tokens. And that's for use at the holiday vendors, which are the lovely merchants in your capital cities. You can buy things like the romantic picnic basket, the sturdy love fool, love boat, the lovebird hatchling, all of those, there's like a ton of stuff that you can buy from these vendors. Yeah, there's a sturdy lo love fool toy they added last year. There, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of good things. Obviously, it's just for joy and all of those things. Most of that stuff is just cosmetic and it's just kind of fun. It's fun stuff to do in game. Uh, and also the Crown Company Dungeon. This is one of the things that we farm, of course. Yeah, kind of the most important part of Love right. is in the Air. Uh, and you, everybody gets on all of their alts. Um, you want to get the Drops Heart Shaped Box, which does contain Rem's favorite pink, uh, big pink love rocket. Big love rocket, but it's pink. It's always weird to me that Rem is obsessed with a pink love rocket, but I mean, I'm not here to judge. <laughs> Who said I was obsessed? Then you have the toy. The You have a possibility for the toy, the heartbreaker. You get love tokens. Um, cosmetic item, which is the forever lovely rose. There's also the cosmetic item, which is the weird mask thingy. That shoots the that. toxic green, right? Yeah. Toxic. It's like, That's it's like level 200 or something like that. I love yeah. 200. Yeah. That, that looks cool. And the... Pet, which is the Toxic Wasteling, which goes with that weird-looking mask. Uh, you guys can do those. <clears throat> I know that there was some changes made to the level requirements, but I don't remember. Yeah, it's level 16 now because that's when you can enter Shadowfang Keep. Yep. But people don't know what the minimum level is to get the version of the box that can drop the rocket because for Hollow's End, you could enter at a low level, but you didn't get, you didn't get the box. Yeah, so people are like, oh, do I have to be level 16 or 98? Because that's obviously a big difference. <laughs> I thought for some reason they said something about level 80 for the Headless Horseman. Yeah, I was, I, I'm not, yeah, it was 80 or 90, I think. I'm not totally sure, so. Um, yeah, I know that my guild see. was in an uproar about that. I mean, they are yeah, pretty. Yeah, it makes sense there'll be one for yeah. this as yeah. well. So, so you can do the, it, um, but you're not going to get much. They dropped gear, and I think last year it was like 835, and now it's up to 880. So if you have a new allied race or something, uh. You might and it's get kind of in line with time walking gear drops, right? The it's a, it's a little the lower item item level now because I think like time walking Black Temple is like over nine hundred. But yeah, I mean it's it's a good time like time walking dungeon level around there. So they're just giving away the gear, guys. Just go and get it. Yeah. So Dark Moon Fair, February fourth uh, until February tenth, as Rem brought up, this is a good opportunity for you to take advantage of the reputation and experience bonus. Really, if you're leveling, so you have the carousel, which gives you the buff. Right on it. Go do your thing. Be happy. Also, there is the Dark Moon top hat, which it's easier. But if you overbuy and Dark Moon Fair is over. They disappear. So this right. gives you 10% rep and experience for one hour and it's on use. So you don't have to like hurry up and rush where you're going to from Dark Moon Fair once you have the carousel buff. You can carry 20 of them on you because it's a unique stack of 20 and it costs 10 tickets per hat. So if you don't use them after Dark Moon Fair is over, they do disappear and also they don't persist through death. So if you die, you're going to have to re- yeah. The Wii buff works the same way, too, and it's almost even worse. Like, if you die and you lose a buff, you're like, well, now I have to go back to the fair to write this cat. Right, so right. Yeah, so as a, as a side note, I don't know if everyone's thinking like I am, but I would, a, like, sit on the carousel and just queue dungeons because you'd have to map oh. up and stuff. So 
now having those hats is actually going to be very, very beneficial because you're actually able to level in the world. Yeah, I wouldn't have right. thought of that at all. I would have been completely inefficient and I would have wasted five minutes of my buff figuring out where I wanted to go after I got the buff. It's better to have more than you need than not enough. So I like that. Yeah. I was also going to say that this is really good whether you have the allied race done or not because if you have the allied race, you want that buff so you can level them quickly to get that yep. heritage armor. And if you don't have them, then you want the reputation side so you can get to exalted and unlock them yep and on that note i'm going to talk about it later actually i'm just going to talk about it later we're going to talk about how you can get quicker or not quicker how you can gain reputations utilizing other things like mission boards and stuff like that i think okay. a lot of people probably don't think yeah. about but we'll talk about that mm -hmm. uh in this a minute neat. The Battle for Azeroth dev Q&A with Ian. Listen, guys, this turned into a PvP Q&A, so it was less yeah. about BFA and more <laughs> about PvP. We're going to actually not talk about the PvP stuff this week because I have, um, I think I have Zaru on, not next week, but the following week, and I kind of wanted to chat his ear off about PvP stuff. But let's talk about just some things that I think are relevant. Uh, weapons in Battle for Azeroth will Titanforge, or will Warforge, but they will not Titanforge, which... I kind of agree, and I'm. No, I do. I think I think that's good. I think it would get too complicated, um, having so much variation. And Blizzard wants to tone the Titan forging down. So. I think a lot I'm of cool the with issue that. with with gear in general, and this, it, we haven't had to deal with it with weapons because it's been artifact weapons. But right. I think a lot of the issue is if um, another warlock in my raid gets you know uh, x amount of gear that's titan forged and i don't have the titan forged version their output is a lot better than mine and right. so and a they're weapon the preferred could really, like it increase the gap by a huge amount more than an armor piece that titan forges maybe um, i just feel gear. like i feel like gear should be difficulty specific and less about Let's just give you added item levels because you did a thing and we're just going to make it upgrade every five seconds every time you get a piece of gear. You want to know why they have no more, or more of the, I can't talk today, not, no more Titan forging? Because the Titan Forge, the Titans have no more power. Yeah, Ka he, Kazgaroth gave us, he gave us the Titan Forge ability in Argus and we used it all up. <laughs> that's actually pretty good. I, didn't, I wouldn't have thought about that. I'm not as witty as you, Rem. Yeah. Oh, I think we forgot the most. We, we kind of skipped the uh, bullet point bomb in the dev Q and A. Did I? Um, oh yeah. Yeah, we, we did. This to me is the most important thing. In this. So <laughs> yeah. we were talking yeah. pre-show. Now I watched the dev Q and A, but it's during my work day, so I have it on in the background, yeah. and I don't usually probably miss. I probably miss about half of what's being said, right? So I usually yeah. catch the summary later so that I can catch myself up on it. Apparently. Ian accidentally dropped the bomb that uh, Draenor orcs are coming as a future yeah. allied race. I... Yeah, someone was like, oh, like, tell me, like, are more allied races coming? And he's like, yeah, so over the course of 8-0, you can get the Zandalari trolls and the uh, Draenor orcs. And Lore was like, don't you meet Dark Iron Dwarves? And he's like, oh, yeah, those two. So <laughs> Those two. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite uh, when you accidentally Freudian slip. Now, I... Orcs are not really my favorite. Rem's an orc guy. I think Perk likes orcs. I'm not really about the orcs per se, but I want to theory craft on what possibilities this could be for the types of orcs from Draenor because there's a lot. The whole expansion was orc. So I think that maybe one thing could be the Maghar and um, because there's that Horde storyline related to Nagrand and then Thrall um, being involved in Nagran, that maybe Thrall would be, I don't know, the leader of them or be involved in some way because he kind of became absentee in Legion and this could be a good way to, I don't know, bring him back into the spotlight, give him some orcs again to be, you know, in charge of and govern. So that's one possibility. Yeah, give him some leverage or some way for him to gain back his honor because that's the reason why we have Doomhammer on our shamans because mm -hmm. he's not honorable anymore, but that could be a way bring bringing back old um, heroes like Rexar, and the like you said the Magcar would be a good one, but I don't think it'd be the Magcar in general. But the old the OG before yeah. the um, demonic corruption would be a very nice addition. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, Machnathal could, could be yeah. It could also place. be from warlords like Grom could be like, hey guys, I'm back. Um, you know, I came to your assistance. I, I got my orcs with me. We didn't drink the blood of manor off. But that, that could get kind of screwy with the timelines. I feel like that that's something Blizzard would do, though. 
Sometimes their timelines really have me. It's like, oh, fuck it. Let's just do it. Yeah, but I feel like somebody at their meeting was like, hey, let's just do this thing. I mean, they could bring back Ro, but then, like, we'd have a third race of Drenai. That would be kind of weird, but I think people would love to see her back, at least. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, no, um, uh, that's actually a good point, too. You could have, well, it wouldn't be her because she's still considered just a basic Draenei. I really wanted, instead of the Lightforge, that's an awesome addition, but the Broken. You could bring back a comma. You could have uh, Chieftain Hakun that you um, yeah, went with in cool. Krokun. So, I mean, there's, I'd rather have the Broken, honestly. And Nabundo, he's the reason why the original Draenei's at the moment are able to become shamans. He lost the light. He communed with the elements. He's a broken. So I mean, they talked you can about... bring back the Kurinai and then the Mag Magar. They're both in Nagran, so it could be like, oh, we're getting the all the races from Nagran. And I'd like a non-green orc. Only reason why Draenei's and orcs don't like each other is because of the Legion and Sargeras corrupting the orcs. So yeah, I, mean, I would like a non-green it... orc. I mean, we've had a we've had our fill of green, in my opinion, mm -hmm. for yeah. many you never many have expansions. Brain. I'm just saying, like, I'm as a warlock, naturally I love fell because that's what I do. But I feel like I I need a different color scape. But I wonder. I had a thought and then I lost it. God, I hate being me. <laughs> it was a good thought too. Like it was going to be a really really good one, and the world will well, never know. You're going to like the new color scheme though too, so because it's your favorite color. Oh, that reminded me. Thank you. You totally jogged my memory. So, wait, maybe I lost it again. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, no, I, no, know I got it. I think Perculi actually knew where I was going. So they did talk about, in one of the interviews recently, I'm not sure who did the interview, but they talked about uh, possibly having an allied race or um, an allied race with just one class that was specific to that faction. So, like... Oh, yeah, like the Alliance, they're like, oh, it's cool now how the Alliance gets the Paladins and right. the Horde gets the Shamans. Right, yeah, they talked about that being a possibility for, I think they talked about it being a possibility in the future. Um, yeah, and now really? cur they're currently set up that way where the only the Light Forge gets the Paladin and the High Mountain get the Shaman. Um, but I know a lot of people really want Zandalari Paladins, so people are hoping it doesn't, <laughs> you know, people are really hoping it happens. They're like, oh, they could just be like covered in bling and be very Aztec and um, have gold dinosaur paladins everywhere well it's not just new like willy-nilly they're paladins they have a classification in their society yeah. for paladins so it, i i'm hoping for it i wouldn't play it but just to expand on the story of the loa as well so that would help yeah willy-nilly i feel like that's a phrase we don't use enough <laughs> willy-nilly so kudos to ian for that freudian slip he probably didn't have his coffee before the show i love that i wish they did that more often yeah, I feel like, I, I don't know, I feel sometimes he does that on purpose. Like, there, there's been a few kind of mic drops that, that he does. Um, like, I remember also... at the end of BlizzCon where he's like, Argus, 7-3. Like, Whoa, <laughs> like, what just happened? Like, I he, feel he, like he they do that everything. for data mining also. I feel like, yeah. so the, we've been not seeing any cutscenes for what the last, I think Legion was through all throughout alpha and beta and that whole thing we didn't have any of those cutscenes and then in, PR, right. yeah. in ptr there's you get random placeholders or old cutscenes mm -hmm. that we've already seen yeah. i thought it was really funny that just recently all of the sudden all this stuff is coming out and it's like they would rather have people that are grabbing that information kind of be the information bringers so that they don't have yeah, to they even made a joke at blizzcon where they're like we're not going to tell you what happens in the troll raid because you know we don't want to deprive people of finding it out through the data mind uh, dialogue. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, like, I, I thought it was a fluke how they spoiled Antorus in the data mind dialogue. I'm like, oh, well, like, I guess I just got their blessing to, you know, keep, keep posting this. They probably sort of figured it was easier to just let you just have at it versus them just trying to hide it. And then it probably like, not oh, coming out in a it, professional yeah, manner. It's not working. We tried scrambling it. We tried doing this. No, they're still putting it together. Fine. Yeah. yeah they're figuring it out. You guys are, they're going to have to just, just give it, give the information. If everything wasn't such a secret, we wouldn't have to stock information, honestly. But that's part of the fun. It's, it's you're secret. right. That is, you're right. 150%. You're right. Uh, also, he did talk about the reasoning behind allied races uh, being locked behind rep and storylines, which I've never had a problem with that. It made sense to me even before he kind of gave more information about it because I think a lot of people in the community are a little bit frustrated. Now, it's a little weird that people are frustrated because if you've been doing Legion all this time, you're probably already done with a good portion of that stuff. You shouldn't really need anything more there. So all the frustration was kind of weird for me because... This is the most active I've seen yeah. people in an expansion. I, mean, 
I can see both sides. Like they didn't test allied races on the PGR and then they didn't make any official blue post on it. So if you're mm -hmm. someone that maybe wasn't playing for a while and you're like, oh, like I should come back to WoW, I'll pre-order and I'll unlock my, you know, thing. And you're like, what? Well, like, what? you know, I don't <laughs> see the button to create my void help. Like, what is Just this? Just kidding. Yeah. I, I yeah, that's a valid that point. Like, but on that same note, I was I refed the forums and the different communities, and there was someone that's like, "Oh, I'm super casual, um, and I don't have enough time to just sit there and farm rep." And then someone was like, "I'm gonna stop you right there. I have third shift, I have kids, and I play casually." And he was still able to get the rep up. So it's not like a a lack of um, time; it's a lack of trying sometimes. Well, and yeah. here's here's what they wanted. So the big thing here is to understand the allied race that you're recruiting. Okay, right. so we've done quests with them. A lot of people like me who are not super lore, unless it's Nightborn, right? I know all things Nightborn. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people like me don't really pay attention to things on the on the vast scale. So I wouldn't know what's going on with the High Mountain Torn from their culture, their story, what they've been through outside of questing, which sometimes maybe I didn't pay attention if I didn't particularly care for that zone. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like the Nightborn especially because like, you know, people are like, why didn't they join the Alliance? And it's like, well, if you do Insurrection, then you learn kind of how like the Blood Elves and the Night Elves give them very different vibes, even though they're both helping. It broke yeah, my heart because I'm Alliance, but... That. No, I know me too. And like my backstory before I even knew about Legion was that perk was like from Suramar originally and like was... Oh kind of god, you guys are gonna be best so friends. Much. Jesus. Christ. I'm obsessed with all things Suramar. He makes yeah. fun of me. I'm obsessed. I know, and I'm so Hashtag sad. Hashtag not like, fan favorite. Oh, she helped them and now like now they are like rejecting her again. Yeah. So, I yeah. tried to go into PTR on Bell, really happy going to Nighthold. It was like it was making my day, and then it was right after they had changed it where Alliance wasn't friendly there. And I was <laughs> I, I was know. so sad. Like I helped you. I have an easy fix for this. We transfer riders to Horde. No, I can't. I can't go Horde. But I, w I do have my Nightborn now, and I love her. We're going to talk about that later. But yeah, I am obsessed with Nightborn. But yes, it does make sense that you need to go through the story with them to understand what their stuff is about. And maybe you didn't pay attention to it, but that's okay. Not to mention, um, the Allied races weren't a part of Horde and Alliance, so wouldn't make sense that they just get thrown in there where ooh you get this you kind of have to know you have to have your reputation with them you have to know uh their story you just you need to be involved with them on a, on a deeper level besides just wanting them or things that you knew from past expansions or even past situations with uh the specific races it just makes sense that they're putting that behind the, yeah. the story gate which isn't i mean it's not terrible guys i hope they do that a lot more going forward not like cramming it down people's throats right. but like if you borderline force someone to do that they might get interested in the other aspects of the story so yeah, they were talking how i think in the q a they're like oh why did this the zandalari join the horde and they're like you know understanding what the zandalari need and how the horde helps them out that's a big part of like the level the, the leveling experience mm -hmm. of the horde up to 120 so um and I'm it wouldn't excited. make yeah. sense i wouldn't feel i wouldn't know how to feel with an alliance being a troll if i'm being honest like any version of a troll i don't know if that's i'm well, sure that's well, I'm, not, I'm not being like I mean, we, we used to help them in Zul Garub. They were like we earned rep with them. Like we yeah. were exalted with I, I am exalted with, with the Zandalari. Like I turned in my, my bijous. So uh Can can I have my Alliance Zandalari troll? Okay, thanks. Yeah, I got my swift uh, Zulian tiger, so it's like, hey. Uh, I mean you're exalted, but the Dark Spears still have a deeper connection with them as well though, yeah. so Hmm. Like I'm, I'm friends with all these factions that are going horrid. Something is something is wrong here. Like <laughs> the alliance play with exalted, but they're wrong people. <laughs> yeah, I'm still. I'm gonna try to lobby to see if they'll eventually give a nightborn to alliance in some fashion. <laughs> like I just need. It's sad because Belle is like, she's my everything, and she can't be what her true form should be, which is nightborn. She just. Ugh. Anyway, okay, moving on because I'm going to keep ranting about that. Zandalari Trolls and Dark Iron Dwarves will be unlocked in BFA because it's a part of the story, which me and Rem talked about that maybe a month or two ago when we weren't seeing any information on both of those allied right. races. It just made sense. That's part of the story. It wouldn't make sense for us to unlock them when we we don't even deal with the Zandalari Trolls until we're leveling. So uh, it just makes sense that you know we wouldn't mm -hmm. see those before. But... Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be too bad, honestly. The four is enough for right now. Like, that's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of rep grinds to do. Yeah. And just even leveling to them 110, you know, takes a lot of time. So 
you know, people have something fun to do now and um you know it wouldn't be impactful if we're just like oh like you can play as andalori now after all the other races got this huge yeah game. right i'm fine with the pacing and yeah, I don't, no, they, I, I don't yeah. really complain about the pacing much either, honestly. Because I feel like if they give us everything all at once, I'm seriously all over the place. I need them to kind of keep me in my in my content. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm doing all the things at yeah. once. So I feel like and it's like nice. Talking about it, people are, you know, more casual and really trying to focus on one thing. It's like, well, there's only so much content people can consume in one day. Right. And people will consume it in large amounts and they will out... Yeah. They will out consume the game that's there. They'll out consume that. They're gonna out like when you're driving down the highway, you're gonna outrun the headlights eventually. And then they're crying so. on the forums because they're bored because yeah. they don't have anything. Or they get burnt out. Right. Which this is only the first stepping stone too. So people that are like bitter about oh this one is one added, but I mean everything has potential because everything has enough story behind it. True. Yeah, I love how everyone is all like oh like you know this race has a cool model. Could could they be an allied race? Like you know. Could this be an allied race? Like, oh, there's a turtle. There's like a fox. Like, I could see this being a, an allied race. But what does it say? No, because <laughs> everybody's obsessed with the Volpera, and I would, mm -hmm. I would wonder. I think different looking creatures would be interesting for an allied race. Um, and when I say different looking creatures, just like the Volpera is actually a really good example. Something kind of like the panda, where the panda was really different than some of the models that we are used to, while yeah. they're all different, they're pretty much the same. They're all based pretty much the I same. I could see Volpera almost being an alliance allied race because we've got the Nightborn as, with like the Night Elf look as the Horde, and we've got the Void Elf with the Blood Elf animations as alliance, and the Volpera are like goblins, and Horde already has the goblins, so yeah. I could see yeah. the alliance getting like a short race that has the goblin mannerisms. Yeah, I haven't, we don't know a lot about them, but based on what I've seen on you guys as well had site there uh, it looks like they're a lot like the goblins and said that they work for money they are pirates yeah so. time is money yeah. hello mm -hmm. trying What's to get that? that booty trying to get that <laughs> paper um you made booty sound really weird also <laughs> guys thanks to the secret finders discord these guys strike again they found the doomsayers robe like, literally yeah what yeah secret i don't know how finders discord guys i tried in <laughs> ptr to figure out the filters because I was like, yeah, I'm going to get the drop on these secret finders and I'm going to figure out these filters. <laughs> yeah, three days? No. Then... What's funny is you did everything they did. I did. So. <laughs> I took a picture with Chogall the whole nine and did not get the filter. But I was like really excited. So for like an entire week, <laughs> I'm going to beat these guys and it's going to be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Wasn't. Didn't happen. I don't know how they do it because I lost a lot of patience doing yeah, that. power numbers. Like you just have, you know, thousands of people like splitting up and trying different things. And eventually you'll just kind mm -hmm. of brute force it and someone will stumble across it. Isn't it funny how now Blizzard expects that? So they do things on purpose with that expectation. I like how that just the culture just kind yep. of shifts for the for the new player yeah. base, I guess we'll call it. So Doomsayer's robes. Guys, you could be a Doomsayer. Yeah, you could Little do sandwich board. Yeah, you can be handing out pamphlets like those weirdos in Vegas. At least they know the way. Oh, <laughs> I knew you were going to throw drop that in there somewhere. So uh, this actually drops from both the Stormwind and Orgrimmar guards. Now, there's two specifically that were mentioned in a comment. I think it was a commenter. Um, let me look at the. Yeah, there's two NPCs they added, and they have a higher drop rate, and they spawn every, like, five minutes. Um, and I think the guards are a 1% drop rate. Yeah, so there's for Orgrimmar, there's Charles Gasly. Um, and for uh, Stormwind, there's Gordon McKellar. Now, reading, I read through a lot of the comments, and then we had two friends that went and did it also, which is Murky and Shuto. Um, several people got it first you know, first kill, obviously yeah. you have to be the opposing faction. So please don't try to kill your own Storm and Guards Alliance because that's something derpy. So please don't be that guy. But, um, you know, whether it's one or 17 kills, I mean, it's nothing for you to sit there and, and farm those two specifically. I think the spawn timer is, what, seven minutes? Yeah, five to seven minutes. Five to seven minutes in between. So just, you know, do your thing. Um, and so I'm going to show minutes? you. I have this beautiful... <laughs> These pictures, courtesy this of so Shuto cool. and Murky, this is them in their Doomsayer's robes. And something really cool that Shuto actually brought to my attention. There is a... What, did I even put it on here? If I didn't put it on here, I'm going to scream. 
I did put it on here. So oh, if you use the, what was it called again? The whole body uh, shrinka. Two signs, a dwarf and a gnome. That's That could be something. Whole body shrinka. So if you yeah. use that, it turns you into just the sign. So you could just be chilling there spying <laughs> on people. Just the sign, basically, because, you know, you're miniature. <laughs> Don't notice me. I'm just a sign. Right. And using the turkey shooter, you're a turkey wearing a sign. Like, you're just a random turkey chilling in Dalaran wearing the Doomsayer sign, which is amazing. Uh, thank you, Shuto, for sharing that. I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah, that's hilarious. I'm going to upload those to Wildhood after the show. See, look at that. We are, I may not have figured out the filter secret, but we figured out something. Well, I didn't figure out anything. I'm taking the credit, guys. I shouldn't be doing that. That's a terrible thing to do. Uh, if you need assistance and waypoints and all of that stuff, make sure you head over to Wowhead uh, and look in the comments for um, the Doomsayer robe stuff, and you'll be able to find it and get it. Obviously... It's not that big of a deal. It's not super serious, but it's these little fun things, especially with their sending Alliance into Horde and Horde into Alliance. This is basically just driving home more of that faction mm -hmm. conflict before Battle of Azeroth, which I think is great. Yep. And I feel like we should go kill some Horde guards. <laughs> they have families too, Belle. God. Do yeah, they Doomsayers have family as well. Yeah, like, and why? No, they don't. They're Doomsayers. They... They've got a little buddies. Away. They all dress up. Like they're they're all doomsayers are all races. So like they're actually the most peaceful faction. You know? Being in the cult doesn't mean you have friends. <laughs> <laughs> like the lions are friends with the horde doomsayers and vice versa. <laughs> That's actually pretty awesome. Uh I mean, are they cultish though? Do we really know that they're a cult? I don't know. Kind they, of they, they are really funny, uh they have some really funny pamphlets. I think one it's, are it's one of those things where they really do know the future, but they're so creepy and they're so weird that people don't pay attention. And I feel like that's... And everybody's yelling. It's like, oh, it's just these people, like, <laughs> making the end of the world again. Like, they're just crying wolf. Let's just ignore them. And then it turns out it's true. Uh, some hot fixes to mention, which is really just one. The other stuff, you guys can read about all your... The PvP stuff and all that other stuff, but... In case you didn't know, four additional character slots per realm are now live. Now, keep in mind, this does not increase your 50 cap for your account. This is strictly for per realm so that you can have more allied races. I know this Full morning... disclosure, if you're at 50, you have a problem. <laughs> well, I wonder how many people are actually at 50. There's quite a few that yeah. were saying, oh, why isn't this increasing the total cap? I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, I'm, I'm not there. So Yeah, I'm not either. I'm, I'm still three races away or three classes away from having every single class. I saved the melee for last because I'm really derpy when it comes to melee. So Aww. we're going to figure out how to do the paladin. He says it's just a melee. <laughs> well, <laughs> I hate you. Now, guys, the big news we've all been waiting to talk about. BFA is coming on or before September 21st. Here's the thing. I've been telling people that I feel like this is going to be like July, August. I've been saying this for like seven months now and everybody's been telling me, you're crazy, you're crazy, you're crazy. Interesting because their verbiage, and I want to see if Perk feels this way, their verbiage, although they say honor before September 21st, and we know they do that on purpose, right? Because they want to give us proper expectation and if stuff isn't ready, they don't want to push something out. However, in a lot of their stuff, I've been seeing summer of 2018. To me, I was actually so, going to mention that, right? Yeah. So, but th they said Legion was also summer, and I think that summer is a technical term for quarter three. Okay, that makes fall sense. Fall starts in late September, so I don't. I, I honestly think it's going to be September because it's still pretty fast, all things considering the the period between pre orders and September is really short when you consider that for Legion pre orders started in November. And the data mining started in November, and we didn't get the expansion until end of August. So, well, I think things are already kind of like condensed compared to Legion. So, I think that they're going to need late September, but we're going to get like a big pre patch and maybe, I don't know, July. In that case, just wake me up when September ends. What? That was really bad. God, <laughs> that was a bad one. I can't even give you credit for that because it was so bad. So, my question. The way that they did the content, this expansion was gold, right? They gave us exactly what we need, exactly when we needed it, so there was no droughts. 
Right. Is it logical to assume that perhaps they don't really necessarily need an entire expansion ready for us to do a good That's portion a good of that point. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you don't need the raid two weeks into the expansion. Right. You know, I feel like this gives them the opportunity to like oh, say, okay, we need to have this chunk done so that this can be live by this time. And then that gives us time that, to work on the other stuff. That's a good thought. I mean, it could be like, okay, well, it's a lie, but you can just level for a month or two. Like you can't hard a Bazaroth. You can't, you know. Yeah, I'm it. okay with the carrot and the stick yeah. in front of me, like make me chase it. Yeah, you, you can explore Kulturas and Zandalar, but you can't really... You know, right, you can't go beyond that until the next step, which is great because then once again, people can't gobble up all that hard work that they've done for this expansion. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, three months into the expansion, everybody's yeah. crying because there's nothing to do. But mm -hmm. I've been thinking about the way that they did the content pacing and I feel like Blizzard, to me, they, they're they masters at being predictable, yet they're also masters at expecting people to think they're predictable and then breaking that prediction so when they expect us to be expecting something, they make it unexpected because right. they expect us to expect the expected. Yeah, like how everyone assumed like, oh, everything will now be 77 days. And they'll just like, no, we'll oh. just like have 732 super fast and then like have Aunt Taurus be at a random time. And it was then, like, super random. I did not understand yeah. it at all. But yeah. I do, I think, I really do think that we are, I think people are going to be surprised. I Although I want to think September, the only thing that makes me think that it would have to be, if it's going to be September, it would need to be the beginning part of September because um, the raid testing, right? Isn't there like what happens in September? DreamHack, uh, Gamescom? Oh, that's a good point. Uh, the Gamescom is always <laughs> August. So I could see Gamescom being a good hype moment for the expansion, whether it either just comes out or it's about to come out. I could see them using Gamescom as a vehicle to have some sort of release party celebration yeah even maybe like if they ha highlighted the raid at maybe gamescom or i don't yeah, know like how they did karazhan yeah. when legion came out they're like oh you know like the legion's not out yet but the next thing is karazhan so they could be like hey you know well we've been focusing on leveling in zandalar but you know the next taste is we're actually going to talk about like cool deer now and right talk about the next round of allied races coming or Maybe at the start, we don't get the Zandalari and Dark Iron Trolls, but then at Gamescom, they're like, oh, by the way, you know, December, you're going to be able to get these two races, something like It that. just feels like they would use, because they've been using Gamescom for their big announcements recently. Yeah, even so. 7 3, we got that really cool cinematic, even though it wasn't the expansion. They still want to do a hype thing because it's like BlizzCon for European players, so they want to give them something cool. Oh, yeah, the Gamescom right, is right below BlizzCon in terms of the hype for Blizzard yeah. games and Warcraft, so it makes I sense. I feel like we are going to see it a little soon. I've been saying that all along. And the funny thing is, is if I'm wrong, that's totally okay. But I just want to be the one guy that is a little different with the thought process, and then there'll be one time in like the next 10 years we'll actually be right about something. Oh. <laughs> and, then, and then it's like, yes, I'm right. Uh, also, the pre-purchases are out, which most of you guys already know that. Unfortunately, we thought changing the show to Thursdays would give us super good timing, but Blizzard's <laughs> been putting stuff out earlier in the week instead yeah. of when they normally do it, so it didn't really work out that way. Now, three different versions. The collector's physical copy. We don't know any information about that. All Blizzard said is later. Later in the year was what they said, which is a little scary. It's super stressful because you're like, oh, like I'm a hardcore fan that loves my collector's edition and I can't play Allied Races because I'm waiting for this box. But, right. Yeah. But so you have your standard digital version. That's about $49 USD. It gives you Battle for Azeroth, obviously. Your level 110 character boost, which I actually did a video for Method the day this happened, but it got posted today. So it was, it was late information, but it was actually current the time that I did it. <laughs> um, so when you boost your character, I actually went through the process of boosting specifically so that I could find the stuff. And then WoW had grabbed it this morning. They had somebody go through that. They put up a guide because people needed that info. And I was like, dang, um, where were you I yesterday? Your guide. Yeah. I'm like, can, wait, I needed this. Have the visuals and then the written stuff. Yeah, I can, I can bet. But I needed it yesterday because I boosted just so that I could, I mean, I needed to boost yeah. and I'm going to tell you guys why. Right. But boosted character, the eye level for your boosted tune is 855. Does come with the artifact weapon of the spec that you chose. Your class halls unlocked. You have your dollar run hearthstone. You have your whistle. It comes with three relics. I think the relics are 870. Yeah, they're 870. 870. I've got the guide up. 
Um, uh-huh. And most of the traits are already added into your weapon. Yeah, the you three got, rank, you got the the three rank, the three four rank, and then the four five rank of what you have. I think those are missing. And then the additional traits that were added previously, uh, where we got that new set of four plus the fifth concordance gets unlocked. You'll have to do those. So what I did. Soon as I I boosted, I ran and did a couple world quests with like three tokens with that global bonus. Yeah, AK fifty five. Yeah, you get like everything you need in there, uh, and I think I got with three tokens, I was able to finish out the traits of my weapon, and I got like five or six into the Concordance of Legion Falls. So yeah. really, it's not it's it was actually really cool um, to mm. be able to do that. You do get some flight paths in the Legion zones, not many. Yeah, but, I think it's like one per zone, something like that. Yeah, you get like. Fell, Blaze, Ingress, or Illidari. I mean, you gotta work for for something. I I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not lazy. (laughs) I mean, I don't mind. Um, But the boost, in my opinion, is completely worth it because they gave you a lot of stuff, which is really great. It's even more worth it. Oh, Oh, sorry. I I was gonna say, another reason why it's good is suppose um, with the Allied Race Unlock requirements, um, suppose you have a horde that, you know, got the Exalted with the reputation and stuff, but then you want to uh, make a Void Elf. You need that 110 Alliance side to do the unlock scenario so you can roll the level 20 Void Elf. Um, you know, if your horde is, like, Exalted with Argusian Reach and has You Are Now Prepared done, and you don't have that level 110 Alliance, it's like, well, you can't learn why they joined the Alliance, so you're stuck. So, you know, you, you might just want to boost... Um, that faction to do the unlock scenario and then you can make the allied race. That's actually what I did because I'm Alliance. I have a Horde character that's 104. But when this happened, I just wanted to play Nightborn. I did not Mm -hmm. care. So what I did is I did use my boost Horde side. Instead of using it on my 104 Horde though, what I did is I created, I just created a monk healer, Panda actually, and boosted that way I could go get the uh, quest because if you... You have to have 110 on both sides if you want to do mm-hmm. both sides. You just It just yeah. has to be done. And it has right. to be on the server that you're wanting to roll. So the your unlock requirements that are, you know, all that, your max character that you want to roll needs to be on that same server, which connected realms are the same that's considered, you know. Yeah. So that's pretty much one in the same. But that's what I did. I just boosted. That way I didn't have to finish leveling just yet and I could get in there and do all the things. Your faction leaders actually give you the... Um, you'll get the quest that'll pop up for you to go see, right. you know, Anduin in your embassy or, or Sylvanas, which was really mm-hmm. awful for me to have to go into the Horde embassy. Oh, it was traumatizing. I don't know my way around Horde cities at all. So do you remember where the barbershop is? Yeah, because I had to change my Nightborn because <laughs> she, I'm, we're going to, we'll talk about that. I need, okay. I need, I keep getting sidetracked. Uh, and, of course, with the pre-purchase of the Standard Edition, you can unlock and play four of the six Allied races. The Deluxe Digital Version, you get all of those same things, except you get some really cool in-game stuff for the majority of the Blizzard games. So for World of Warcraft, you get the Terra Seabird Stallion for the Alliance side, and then for the Horde side, you get the Zandalar Gilded Ravasaur. Interesting right now. I don't know if they fixed it, but you can actually yeah. cast... Yeah, no, they, they did fix oh, it. Oh, did we they? We talked about it on the show earlier today. Dang. Yeah. So... Well, we were rolling around as Alliance yesterday on dinosaurs, which Mm -hmm. was pretty cool. Um, Yeah. And then this adorable little pet, his name is Toddle. He is so cute. He's got a little baby bottle attached. I should have had his picture, but I did the video and didn't bother. He is, like, adorable. Guys, he's adorable. He's also got his, um, his, uh, whatchamacallit, his, you know. I don't know. You're making it sound really weird, so I'm not really sure. I don't know. (laughs) No, he's got his not the pacifier. He's got his bottle. Um, oh yeah, on his back belt. Yeah. He has the bottle like attached to the back of his shell. He's cute. He's got like a giant tooth. I can't help but be in love with him. Hearthstone has yeah. a really cool BFA card back. It is available. It is available right after pre-purchase. It, it is in game because I checked it out uh, when I did my video the day of pre-purchase. It's like blue with red, you know, animations yeah, and it's like the burning of Keldrassil fire. Type yeah, thing. it's pretty cool and it once again reinforces the Horden Alliance conflict that we're gonna be dealing with. Heroes of the Storm, as of when I did my video, the reward was not in game yet, but it might be now, which is the primal flame saber mount. And there's actually three color variants. So you have your white, yeah. your green, and your toast, which mounts are mounts. Honestly, I love all mounts. StarCraft 2, you get a Horden Alliance spray. That's also live in game. And then Overwatch, you get Two Torbjorn, Torb Torbjorn. Yeah, Torbjorn. 
Got it right. Twelve year on voice voice lines. Uh, one says for the alliance, and one says for the horde. Tracer has an emote, which is uh, she has two. It's a horde and alliance, where she basically like slams the banner down. I went into Overwatch just for you guys, so that I could go <laughs> see this stuff live in game. And I got to tell you, I felt a little dirty. And then four <laughs> new sprays, which is Anduin, Sylvanas, Jaina, and Vorak, which is Sarfang. And uh, Cool Terrace in Zandalar icons for the player icons. I didn't see any mention of Diablo. Yeah, I didn't either. They always tend to add Diablo in later. Like Legion, I remember they announced separately that there was the Demon Hunter Helm transmog. So yeah. I could totally see them doing Alliance and Horde banners or, I don't know, some Helm or weapon that was Anduin or Sylvanas themed. Um, Agreed. Yeah. Now... If you guys are struggling because you buy the physical collector's edition, I get it. I think it is a little frustrating that Blizzard hasn't kind of dealt with this because this has been a complaint for a really long time. Maybe that's the reason they're delaying the announcement of the retail copy, but that wouldn't make sense if that's the reason because yeah. they would tell people. I just think they need a better policy because it, it seems like you have to buy the digital deluxe and then you can buy the collector's edition and they're like, oh, you get a, a, a copy of the key to give away. And it's like, but some people you know, money can be tight or they just, they just yeah. want to buy the collector's edition. They don't want, you know, they don't want to have to do both. Two. It's like, I just want to spend my money on one. There should be a system in place when you buy it that you get, um, you get the code. That's yeah. the way, that's the way that I think that it should work. And maybe Blizzard plans on revamping that. I do think it's kind of crappy that the people that want to wait, uh, kind of are a little bit, you know, left out in the cold, but also I don't, I don't think it's, there's anything wrong with that either. I think, just you have to make a choice. Are you going to buy both? Because yep. if it was me and I didn't, I don't really collect the physical stuff because it just sits on my shelf and it collects dust. But if I did, I would buy the deluxe digital so that I could have the stuff now. And then I would pre-order on a different month, maybe for budget purposes, right? You can pre-order yeah. the, the physical copy. You don't have to do it same time. And then right. I would just sell the key to a friend like, hey, here's this key and get my money back for it. That's what I would do. But I don't know. Is that, yeah. is that frowned upon by Blizzard to sell your key? No? I mean, I think the idea was that, oh, well, you have this extra key and you're obviously meant to give it away because why would you need two keys? <laughs> yeah, I'm about my taco money, though, so I'd probably sell it because that would get me, yeah. like, 1,100 tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on a Tuesday. <laughs> uh, I don't really know if 1,100 is actual, but, uh, yeah. So, the... I think I, I mean, I pretty much gave you what you guys needed. You don't really need me to tell you what you need for the races because, you know, we've already got that. But I do want to talk about the heritage armor real quick. Yeah. You don't have to if you're not interested. So once you unlock your allied races, if you want to just race change, cool. Handle your situation. Not a big deal. But if you want the armor, which is why I'm hand leveling a Nightborn because I want to have the Nightborn armor. You have to level. You cannot boost. You cannot... Pasco, you can't collect $200. You have to level from 20. They start at 20 to level 110. And then you get the achievement um, yeah. for unlocking. So And like, air, you can use heirlooms on it. Like that does not count as a boost negation thing. You just can't actually bring it to 110 or I think use RAF with it. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think they specifically stated no RAF. Yeah. And you well. can't um, award the point or the levels yeah. or right. use it. Which honestly, the... I think it's fun a new perspective leveling is a different race. I don't know how many of you feel about immersion, but I think immersion's really, really crucial when it comes to what we're doing in game. And while we might get annoyed because leveling sometimes, even with the new changes, while it's a joy and it's challenging, it still might feel like a chore to people. But I think experiencing that with a different race that we haven't been through before, I think it's a, kind of just a whole different like world, in my opinion, if you're yeah. you know putting yourself into that story. And they, they just revamped stuff with 735, so a lot of zones that you may not have fully done the stories in before, you, now you actually have an incentive to stay in the zone and see the whole story because it kind of levels up with you. And I was doing questing in uh, Zul'Drak, and there's quests I haven't done since Wrath. And I was like, I remember this, but I haven't done this in literally like eight years. Holy shit. What did we do? We did Elwyn Forest, and there was quests I didn't even know existed because... <laughs> I yeah, hopped. she never been to the pumpkin patch or anything like that. Yeah, I, it was like a whole new... And I could have maybe glanced by there, but when I leveled Bell, this was 2008. Right. So even just remembering just different places and remembering going through those quests, I think it 
I don't know. It was really nostalgic for me. I enjoyed it. I don't mind that it, it takes a little bit because it's not a face roll anymore. I think if you have to, I think if you can Netflix and play a game and you could literally close your eyes and play a game, I think that's when Blizzard need, needed to sit down and revamp that system because yeah. while it's convenient that you can Netflix and do those things, it's not very fun for you, especially Yeah, like Blizzard has made so many zones and so much art and so many quests and it's like, oh, like they're just, it's, just, it's not very business effective to have them like, oh, well, your shelf life, okay, you know, cool, we quested once, we'll never do them again. It's like, well, why do we just build all these very labor intensive zones like it's good if they have some re replayability agreed 150 percent so if you guys want to buy it buy it if you don't want to buy it don't buy it but just just do, do it. it somebody posted on twitter and was like i don't know if i should buy a new bed for me to sleep in because i don't have a bed or if i should buy the expansion and i'm like you got a blanket you're fine no i was like sleep in the tub priorities like this should not even be a question <laughs> don't ask me for financial advice because <laughs> me and rem didn't get paid until we don't, we didn't get paid until Wednesday. Well, I didn't get paid till Wednesday. And I'm like, oh, PayPal, done. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's all, but the budget. I'm like, yeah, it's PayPal. They're not going to take it out until the following day. So I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the racials, the racials, man, the racials. The racials are always going to be super amazing with anything new for Blizzard. We Everybody should already know that. It should be expected. I seen somebody was very angry about these racials. <laughs> and they were using some very not nice words. Aww. Honestly, they're not as busted as you might think. They're... But that is to be expected. Everything yeah. new to Blizzard, yeah, they come people, out amazing. People were like, oh, you know, that this proc rate. Like, what if it procs all the time for the Void Elves? And it's like, well, it doesn't actually proc all the time. Well, so I leveled all the way through Duskwood and I'm currently in STV with the Void Priest or Void Priest, yeah. Void Elf um, leveling another priest. And no, it was procking quite a bit to where it's noticeable, but it wasn't giving such a, uh, a significant advantage that people are thinking like it's, in the whole scheme of things, it's only like a one to 2% increase. Right, and then uh, they, everyone else has something similar. Like the Nightborn just have a static 1%. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, well, in some situations that might, you know, be better um, than, you know, 5%, maybe every prox every 30% and then it's on a minute cooldown. And Yeah, you have like 10% of the health left on the bot or the little mob you're killing. It finally procs, but the mob's already dead. So it's like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm walking around and I'm purple at least. <laughs> right. Which yeah. to that end, I'm going to show you here is, here's Rem's Void Elf. He actually is leveling a Void Elf, but he made his Priest. I like the Void Elves. It's but the I, other emo elf. I don't particularly care for Blood Elves <laughs> yeah, because I think elf. Blood Elves are too dainty in my opinion. I get it. A lot of people like them and that's cool. But for me, the Void Elves are basically the purple versions of, you know, the Blood Elves. And the boys don't look very manly in my opinion. They had like huge six packs earlier in the in the PTR cycle. Like they had some like pretty uh pretty intense abs. <laughs> yeah, like they're I just feel like abs. I feel like men should just be men, you know? Like <laughs> they just need to be manly and you know, girls can be buff too. Like I'm not hating. And then here <laughs> is the beautiful Bellasond. Um what the proper Yeah, name. I spelled it wrong the first time, so, so I did a name change. I don't feel bad for it, guys. Really this, quick, uh I didn't know you're gonna put the full name on there uh, i thought i put it on there because i thought it was funny because your name <laughs> so i love her i don't like my wand but right now at my level you can only transmog up to a certain cap so i just kind of have to work with what i got i actually hate my transmog but um i love the tabard is my favorite yeah that's a cool note just to mention that you get the tabard when you make the allied race and then you do then it's like oh well if you want to get the matching armor you have to quest with this until 110 yeah and the data the gear the transmog gear is pretty horrible at this level but i mean i made it at least work with the color scheme yeah. and oh also, actually that reminds me they changed the 735 where you can any level up to 60 can use up to level 60 transmog appearances so right. like you can like transmog your void elf in like i don't know Felhart or you know Tier one, tier two, tier three, all those like level six yeah. sets. So you have some cool options. Yeah, I usually use when I'm level leveling, I because I got all the um stylist armor. I usually just yeah. get that because it's a full set and it works. 
I get really sad when I level or when I start a new character because the transmog options are limited. But at least they've they've made some adjustments at a higher level, which is good. I just hate mm-hmm. looking like a hobo. I don't even like stepping outside of my order hall unless I'm properly attired and everything. So you don't want to look like a hobo, but Belle looks like a... Well, okay, oh. so Belle has a slut mock, and I'm going to be <laughs> honest with you guys. I have teenage daughters, so I have to dress appropriately because children don't do what you say. They do as you do. And I act out through Belle. She's my... <laughs> I You're do, conduit for her. Yeah, I do all of my acting out through her because that's the only thing I could do. She's wearing the black mage weave. Oh, nice. Well, they, they have the really shimmery tattoos, so that shows them off really well. Yeah, the my human bell. She wears, she's wearing the black mage weave, and she has the nightborn tabard because obsessed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she's she's got a nice booty. Human butts are nice, guys. I know everybody's talking about blood elf butts and all of that stuff, but I personally think humans have the best butt. Draenei may be a close second. Also, guys, I want to tell you a secret. Me and Thalrissa, like, we're besties. I don't know if you guys are, like, Really? Because she told me the same thing. I don't think it's that special. You think <laughs> Look at it. us. I have proof. I'm standing next to her. We're just hanging out. First she did, the first thing Thalrissa did is she invited me to her estate. I got a personal invitation to go to her estate. And we just, like, we clicked. We were in sync. And then... She lets me come to the night hold. And, it's and then she was like, baby, bye, bye. And the, no, look, she's stand, like, she's chilling. She's loving me. Like, we really, yeah, we're we're besties. I just want you guys to be jealous of this picture that I took uh, because I didn't see anybody else posting pictures with her. Okay, so that must be. She doesn't be- notice you. She, notice, she notices her other friend that's beside you. Uh, Lady L- L- Lindestra. Lindestra, right? Is yeah. Lindestra? Yeah. Which, by the way, I don't like the, that version of the Nightborn haircut because it looks like Dumb and Dumber's haircut. It's not one of my <laughs> favorites. And for that, my last gripe, I expected uh, different customization options, like more of them. I think I had an expectation. I was a little let down by the hairstyles, in my opinion. But, I mean, I guess we can't complain, right? Yeah, during early data mining, they only had the white hair colors, and then maybe a few weeks in, they added the other colors. So it, it could have been even more limited, but at least they added a few more over the course of the PTR. Yeah, hmm. and I guess it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense for them to give like the other hairstyles that we have for the other races. Currently. Yeah, especially because the Nightborn, you know, now hate the Night Elves. So it's like, why would they want to? They they they, they yeah. don't want to be mistaken for them. <laughs> I just opted for the the ponytail. What was your first allied race? Uh oh, so I I have not actually created them yet cuz I did. There was a Mac bug, but um it's going to be Nightborn. Yeah, cuz you so. game on a Mac, lady. How about Wait, we bring yeah. you Wait, excuse me? Let's bring you into the new century. I, know, I need to order a new one. It's just like I've just been so busy like covering the PTR I haven't actually it's, there was a Mac bug. Don't where... you have like an intern or an assistant that you could put together no. a shopping list? <laughs> <laughs> I should though. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there is a MacBook where if you logged on, your whole screen would go black. And I'm like, well, this sounds horrible. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'll because not do that. <laughs> they're trying to tell you it's time for an actual. Yeah, they just posted those system requirements. Actually, I was I was waiting because I wanted to see what the Battle for Azeroth system requirements are, and they put them up. What was it? I don't know. Yesterday, yesterday I think. So now I have a shopping list of what I can get on a new PC. Have you always just gamed on a Mac? Yeah, um, like I, yeah, I always just sort of, I don't know, grew up with them, had them. So, so. you don't even know the life of gaming on an actual PC. I am so excited for you. Like, <laughs> honestly, though, Macs are really good for multitasking because they have high processing. Like, I love Macs when it comes to work things. Um, yeah. Their multitasking ability, honestly, is better than the PC. But for gaming... Yeah, that's yeah, exciting. I, mean, I have a home office, so I could probably just... Keep a bunch of old things around, and if I want to use the Mac for one thing, I've got the Mac, and then use. The or you could just do a Hackintosh. I it it did not work for me. It like, screwed up the computer. It was I don't know. I screwed something up. I'm really bad about trying to do stuff like that too. People are always like, "Oh, you should jailbreak your iPhone," and I'm like, "Yeah, because I'd be the person." No, that it's, it's it. not literally like Hackintosh. You just have it on a separate boot drive, and it, it yeah, you, well. you partition it, and I some, yeah. something happened when I tried. So I'm. Yeah, I partitioned Bertha recently, and it was not. We're not going to talk about that meltdown. Oh, sorry, my my PC, See? my yeah. PC. Her name is Bertha because she's very, she's a very large, like she's very tall. She's very but I tried to partition. Yeah. I did a thing and some stuff. It was just not. 
<laughs> don't ever check reapply your thermal paste either when people tell you on the internet to reapply your thermal paste because <laughs> your computer will not turn on. Okay. <laughs> Battle for Azeroth discussion. There's so much stuff that we already know. There's been, I think, two or three. Was there two or three builds recently for the alpha? That you oh, guys there, there's just been one. one? It's just information just sort of keeps trickling in as we keep finding stuff. Obviously, they're gearing in, they're gearing up for, yeah. you know, the alpha or beta or whatever they're going to call it when it's released. I, I think we can expect it to be relatively soon. Just whenever I see a lot of data like that, I think everybody knows that that means they're doing stuff and they're prepping uh, for that stuff to be, you know, to start being tested, which is exciting. But there's, with all that new stuff, I'm going to organize it and put it out little by little to the show because yeah. I don't want to do a five hour show. I mean, I would, but <laughs> let's, t I wanted to just have some discussion about some of the stuff for BFA. And then of course, natural discussion will bring out more stuff. Yeah. yeah. We're already past my bedtime. So whatever. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is nerfs and I'm going to say nerfs because here's, and I fall victim to this too, guys. You got to understand that when it comes to the stuff that's being pulled, this is definitely not the final form, right? There's right. several iterations. When I say several, we're probably talking like, I don't even know. You would probably know the numbers more than me, Perk, of how yeah, many builds. Thousand. Yeah, yeah so we don't even get each build. Like, that's why there's number of jumps. It's like Blizzard might save their work every evening, and then the build number goes up, and then every four or five, they're like, okay, here's enough for you guys to see. Yeah, so we're talking a lot of information that is changing, all that stuff. Now, what happened is... Class stuff got data mined, and I saw people freaking out. I like, oh, the number's lower. Yeah, it's people are posting in the group, squish. oh, rip hunters. Oh, did you see the warlock changes? Look, I try to avoid looking at the destruction changes because, like, that stuff is scary to me. But you have to understand, we're having a stat squish. That involves a lot. So when you're seeing things where it's like it used to be 500% and now it's, you know, X amount percent, it's not necessarily that you your class or whatever's getting a nerf it just means that they're doing what they need to be doing for the for the content they're adjusting they're rebalancing yeah there's no item level a thousand anymore like that's just right not a thing <laughs> and with that you're gonna see things that look scary because it's taking away numbers because they're doing their stat squish also another thing to consider is we've been relying on our artifact weapons for 90 percent of our power this entire expansion with that they've done the balancing around our weapons once we you know, we, we're not going to have those for BFA. They have to now, they're going to have to readjust mm -hmm. everything that they changed for that yeah. so that we are the power, the heart of Azeroth and all of that stuff. You're going to see scary stuff. Try not to panic. Just calm down, chill. It's going to be okay, guys. Like Honestly, I prefer the lower numbers, so... Well, yeah, it makes it easier to understand. Um, that too. Yeah. I do want to bring up, though, it's not just all like, oh, everything is lower. There's a lot of interesting abilities returning, like druids get hibernate and soothe, and hunters have tranquilizing shot, and like every class is some sort of buff that helps their party. And we didn't know what shamans had at BlizzCon, and now we know it's tremor totems. So, um, it's thank not you, just baby like, Jesus. Have they taken anything away from destruction? That's all I want to know. Uh, yeah, well, Life Tap is changed to now grant a Soul Shard, but has a quick Oh, card. yeah, that was actually kind of big. Yeah. It doesn't This is why I don't look at the Destro stuff. This is the exact reason, <laughs> because inside, I'm acting like everybody else and completely losing it. However, I know that it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. I survived Draenor as a Destruction Warlock. I'm going to be okay. <laughs> but did you survive Cataclysm? Oh. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> so I unsubbed. All those changes to Destro, I was like, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not dealing with any of it. I wasn't as emotionally vested as I as I am now. So I was just like, I'm not dealing with any of it. And I just unsub for six months. And <laughs> Ugh. why did I um, even ask? Yeah. I know better than to ask stuff because now in, the, in my mind, I know I'm telling yeah. you guys not to do what I do. It's really difficult for us as players when we're so emotionally connected to, especially when it's a spec that we really, really love. I'm really hoping that they continue to like nerf affliction into the ground though. So well, hopefully did you see Ian the Q and A said yeah, no yeah. last yeah. forever. I so. hope that that means that Destro is gonna be the spec master and the go to because the new king. I would love it. I'll honestly though I feel like it's gonna be Demo because we Destro had what all of Mr. Pandaria to be amazing. Yeah. So I feel like it's gonna be Demo's yeah, turn. Dicks. But I'm happy. Anything that's not affliction at the top, I'm good. Like cool. <laughs> Hey, me too. That means less affliction in the guild as far as spec <laughs> goes. 
Um, so I'm yeah. I'm a stepchild of Try Dog not Dog to Dog freak Dog. out. Understand also that when information is pulled, that information is pulled just so. It just, it's pulled and we may not know what it even means. So Yeah, and you have multiple people working on stuff. So some person can be like, okay, you know, like I've spent most of my work day making mages be good. And someone else could be like, oh, I just like started on paladins for two hours. So it's like the classes are on all different st stages of completion and testing. Yeah, try not to panic. Just yeah, feedback is one thing, but freaking out and saying, oh, I need to change my class is a uh yeah, like there's a state very, of very, mind very, very death knight ability called Thought Seize, and it says in the title, parentheses, NYI, which means not yet implemented. So it's like Blizzard is like leaving little notes for us being like, hey guys, like this is so not. So people not don't freak out or, yeah. yeah. So I think you need to spell that out because if someone's dumb like me, I'd be like, what the hell is NYI? <laughs> Night I said LOE to him because I'm a I'm a product manager and uh, okay. <laughs> I said LOE to him and he's like for the dumb guy because I don't know what that means <laughs> and I'm like level of effort it's for project management uh it actually cracked me up he's really smart he just I don't know <laughs> also so a lot of discussion regarding demon hunters I saw this in the QA but I also saw this um, being a huge topic on Twitter and on mm -hmm. in some of the Facebook groups, people are super salty about Demon Hunters kind of not fitting. I mean, it makes sense that they're not fitting. We just, like, well, we just went through this with the Demon Hunters. It makes sense that we wouldn't allow so-and-so to be a Demon Hunter. But they did say, it was either in an interview or on the QA, not 100% sure. But they did say, well, it's not impossible and it's not even to say that it's not going to happen they would just have to figure out timeline timeline wise how that would make sense so i wanted to ask both of you like where could you see demon hunters fitting into the allied races with the given the timeline issue so like illidan is now you know a a, a good guy you know like he's he's always a good guy we well, I mean, right everyone is all like oh you know like argus happened and like you know illidan's off being a good jailer and you know i feel like Maybe um, demon hunters are less, um, you know, like pariahs. And maybe it's like, oh, like, look, demon hunters can do legit things and be protectors and they're not just emo. So maybe they are recruiting more people to join their, you know, ranks in, in general. Um, yeah. So, and, you know, maybe it's like, oh, well, a Draenei could be a demon hunter if um, the demon hunters worked with the Lightforge Draenei you know, on Argus, maybe, I don't know, some of them would want to take that path after seeing it. Unless they're salty that Illidan did not know the way, because he was not having any of that light stuff. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Illidan well, that, that's does just know the way. Example. Like a Void Elf could be like, I don't know, like maybe, you know, like a shadowy melee is a, is a, is a demon hunter. Um, so. Yeah. But, that's interesting. But no, with yeah. the way they're doing allied races, they don't need to have a whole background to it in the, in the sense that we need to know about the race. They could be say like, oh, we found out about this race. We've done tests, not like tests, like scientists, but like we've tested their abilities. And then they can make like a back uh, backstory and a scenario where they lay it out to where they're teaching more people to be demon hunters because I think we have that knowledge now. Demon Demon Hunter Nightborn, I think, would be a pretty epic combination. I think well, that would make sense because have... like the Nightborn had their city, you know, like attacked right. by the Legion, so it makes sense why they would want to join. Hmm. That's interesting. It's like okay, we know the Burning Leading Burning Legion is defeated, but I mean, they've been a big threat to us for like ten thousand years, and all these evil people keep coming back to life. So why don't we just be prepared and make sure that we have some people that know how to, you know, kill demons here? I like it. Mm -hmm. I feel like are dark grand dwarves are they gonna have warlocks is that a thing yes they said paladins and I think they said in an interview I think they said maybe death knights but again they have to like work out the timeline for that I, De death knight could work because technically they are part of the dwarven people going over there but mm -hmm. paladin is very very interesting that they would add that that's really interesting i image. saw the whole time whenever dark iron dwarves was even mentioned i i expected dk for some reason i don't know i think just the look it, it made yeah me the glowing eyes and the kind of ashy skin tone so yeah um 
the wild hammers they are your shamans and the very like more down to earth people uh dark irons are going to be natural affinity to magic and fell and dark so stuff i would think shaman so, because i mean the dark irons were enslaved by ragnaros and he's all about the elements yeah. and so we're shaman but they're more about enslaving uh the yeah. shaman as a class their lore is more of communing with the elements instead of yeah. binding them so it wouldn't work for that but i mean i can see that using the elements for good not yeah. being like ragnaros exactly and blowing things up that doesn't sound fun for me guys that's why i'm a warlock <laughs> I like to tread the line of good versus evil. I like to just walk the line. Sometimes I go over the line, guys, and that's okay. Um, there is no line for you. Now, Rem brought up a good point the other day. I think it was Rem that brought it up. If it wasn't Rem, I apologize. We were, obviously, I was just, like, obsessing over Suramar. Like, I was completely obsessing. I was in Suramar on my nightborn. Oh, like, I, I was about, just yeah. going through things just completely very very obsessive that was a great evening there was like a tear shed the whole nine uh but he asked once the nightborn is max level don't you think it would be possible at some point that potentially all of suramar could be friendly to nightborn it seems kind of weird to me that if you're a maxed out nightborn and maybe you've gone through things that they want you to go through as a nightborn allied race that you'd be unfriendly in your own home like well, wouldn't, aren't some of the mobs walking around, like, the enemy Nightborn still, like, the... Yeah, no, they're part of, they're underneath like, um, Elisan, but... Yeah. It would oh, be cool if, like, the, city, like, the whole city phased over to be like, oh, you know, we, we, we took the city back, finally, <laughs> you know. We're yeah, not we recruited back. enough allied races to where we could, you know, we could take over, yeah. so now you can... But I think it would be really interesting, and I, even with... I don't know what the other races. I think when you zone in as a high mountain, you get killed. You could get killed right away if you're on a PvP server. Uh, somebody had told me that they 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 join their high mountain and it starts them on oh shit. on the and they just basically got killed. Thunder totem. Yeah, they started on yeah. thunder totem and like oh yeah, because you have alliance to just like the wrecked tribes. them, yeah. so there wasn't any yeah. phasing or anything That's for them. That's hilarious. Yeah, oh, they, it sounds terrible. Yeah, there wasn't like no slow. We're gonna slowly get you in here. We're gonna I'm drop glad, you. I'm kind of glad not Lightforge and Void Elf are kind of separated in instances. <laughs> it's interesting that they chose to not do that for High Mountain. Actually, now that you bring that up, I wonder what. I wonder why. Yeah. Well, because the scenario for. Oh, well, can we talk about the scenarios? Or I mean, I think by now people have seen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, like for the high mountain, um, you have to walk with what Hulan did with putting up wards against a dark force. I'm not going to be specific because I want to talk about it a different week, but in depth. But uh, you have to actually go through high mountain in terms of the actual world. So that's why they wouldn't do that in that sense. Hmm. Yeah. The scenario. I mean, not to get into specifics in it, but just from a technical perspective, like looking at the number of quests, the other three allied races have like an instant scenario where you do the bulk of it. But for the mm -hmm. high mountain, you like, oh, you have 20 quests instead. <laughs> um, so it's organized a bit differently than the other. Yeah. I also noticed like for the Void Elves, you go through portals with Ilaria, you're like, bam, there, bam, there. High mountain yeah. is like, oh, maybe here, over here. I'm like, oh, I'm not used to it. Okay. Fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll do whatever you say. And last on this particular set of discussion is what we know of the profession changes, which first off, it's going to be less story driven. A, men. I do enough <laughs> questing. I don't need to quest for professions, guys. That's not on my list. It was fun while it you lasted. You don't want to run Halls of Valor like 10 yeah, times to get like, recipes. <laughs> oh, hello, cat. Like, I say hi to Brightpaw, guys. That's Brightpaw. There's and his tail. And that's his tail. Yep. Come on, baby. Let me pick you up. I mean, up. I saw his butt, so I feel like him and I are friends now. Once you use, <laughs> once you see butt, you're friends. Oh, uh, totally off topic, but so chimpanzees, they don't recognize each other by their face. They look at their butts. <laughs> I could pick people out by their butts, though. <laughs> I feel like I could do that. I feel like we have a little bright pot ears. You can see them here. But yeah, he um, totally took over where my keyboard is, so I'm moving it out of the way so he can... Not do things like close yeah, out. Yeah, because you're movie. not the boss. He's the boss. He's someone the ruler of the house, point. Perk. You can't. I know. But yeah. someone has a valid Pepe. point. What's the uh, point? Bright Paw has to see your butt before your friends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Pwncast after hours. <laughs> 
Uh, so with the professions came a squish. Going from 800 for your max skill to 100. With that, the skill ups are being scaled down accordingly as well. Guys. So I think that's cool. Why are people so salty? Why are you mad, bruh? To me, and we yeah. talked about this earlier, to me, that's less I have to do, in my opinion. If I want to have, let's say I want to be a tailor, and then maybe the next expansion or whatever, maybe tailoring isn't the best thing. Maybe there was something else added a value to another one that I want to get, whatever, and I don't have, I haven't done it previously, so I don't have the book where I could learn all the stuff that I had before. To me, that seems like it's less work to easily swap professions and easily learn these recipes, easily gain these skill ups. Now, I know why people are complaining. People are complaining because they did all this work, right? They, it's all this work only for Blizzard to change it. And what about all the time I put in? I mean, you paid $15 a month to put in your time. So I feel like you got your money's worth there and I think it's okay moving mm -hmm. forward. So what do you guys think? Are you guys heavy professioners? I mean, like I, back in Wrath, I would level characters so they could farm all the old world recipes that were going away back when, you know, Cataclysm changed the world. So like my Death Knight has like a bunch of, you know, recipes from Dire Maul, like the gilded enchanted thorium stuff. And mm -hmm. I'm really okay with this because I feel like if you collect recipes, you'll still collect them anyway. And so much of leveling from one to 800 with the ketchup thing, it's like, oh, just get this Legion herb and like, make the same potion 800 times. And that just doesn't seem very fun or exciting to me. So it's like, okay, well, the skill up part is not really that exciting. So there's less time spent with skill ups. And if you care about collecting all the weird recipes, there's plenty of weird, fun recipes in Battle for Azeroth for those types of people to focus on and not to worry mm -hmm. about, you know, just, you know, going AFK and crafting 300 things straight. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. It doesn't, to me, it seems, it seems better and less massive. I think if things look massive to people, they often won't do them. So maybe you always wanted to have a leather worker, but it looked. Are you laughing at me because I said weird things and didn't know I was yeah. being weird? <laughs> no. uh, but I, I feel like it's less scary for people and it makes it easier for people to get into different things. So I don't. Guys, I don't know why you're upset. I don't know why you're mad. Comment on the show. There's also a few max level things and it's like max level 800 for like one recipe. It's like, okay, I just, I'm just doing a mind numbing thing to go to 800 to make one recipe. And now I feel like I can never reroll because I have to level to eight, level yeah. 800 again to get this one thing. And Wait, on that, on the note about like just making a ton of the same thing over and over and over, you can make, once you learn to make the same one thing, I mean, you know how to do it. Why? sit there yeah. and accrue all that but are we retaining all the old recipes i haven't looked in depth with it yet but are we yeah, retaining I mean, you should all the be able recipes? to get all the old recipes um then there's no reason to complain what i don't get it yeah and there's a lot of i don't know there's just a lot of cool recipes and i'd rather spend my time getting the recipes and making one cool thing than like making a boring thing a hundred times because blizzard's like oh we can't make yeah. this be too unique or have it cost too much because someone has to craft it 800 times to level well, up yeah for instance with the engineering i would have to do world quests to even get the level because everything else was gray i was like okay I, that was actually going to mention in legion you had to do you know the last 10 points or whatever you had to do or maybe it was the last Which i'm okay with it have being like that but not like to a certain point where that's the only way i can do it I agree. Options. I don't know. I don't know why the people were very upset about this. And I feel like if Blizzard's doing quality of life improvements so that you focus less on the process, right? One of the things as a guild master that's super frustrating is people that are crafting that they're using those 20 things of that mm -hmm. said vest for the imbued silk weave that you don't need, but you need the skill up for. You know what they do, guys? I'm going to tell you what they do. They go right on over to <laughs> the guild the first, bank yeah. and they dump 50 of whatever garbage they just got done doing and they drop it right yeah, in the guild like, bank. That's just bad for the whole. It's like even bad for immersion. Like it's like, oh, I'm crafting a bunch of stuff that I'm never going to use. And it's like, well, why don't we have stuff that costs more reagents that is more unique and special and you don't have to feel pressured like, oh, I'll break the bank crafting 800 of these because mm -hmm. you don't need to. You can just be like, well, I'm going to just create one portable transmog pad to transmog anywhere and it costs mats, but that's fine, whatever. I don't need to worry about this giving me a scope. I'm just crafting this one awesome thing and yeah. then that's it. Agreed. Yeah, there's not going to be, it's going to remove a lot of the clutter too. And yeah, yeah, my guild bank. Recipes just to level up for the sake of leveling. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm really excited about that for the Guild Bank because between that and Left Sharks, guys. I'm still holding on. I spend my so entire so Sunday cleaning out the deposit tab for the Guild Bank. I actually made it where there's only one tab people can deposit in because I got I have OCD really bad. So I got tired of seeing stuff being not put in its proper spot in the tabs. So I do have a deposit only tab where people can only put it there. But so guys, the I, have, don't go in I have to click everything into my bag. And obviously, if you put it in the Guild Bank, it means it's not going to really sell in the auction house. So I have to sit there and vendor all of those items to get a total of like eight gold. Yeah. Baller. I would say that if people are sad about professions, like look at some of the actual new things you can craft. Like you can create a scuba helm. Like I you can make a hot that. air balloon. Yeah, instead of looking at back at what you're losing, look at what uh, everything They're you're doing. They're doing some well. really cool stuff with engineering, actually. Yeah, like you can shock your mount to make it go faster. You can transmog anywhere. You can get a stable master. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Alchemists can turn into a cloud. Transmog. Yeah, anywhere? I might have to change yeah, Bell's a profession. portable transmog pad. That even in and you have indoors? to be an engineer to use it as well as yeah. craft it, right? You have I'm to... so glad my priest is engineer. The best thing I've ever done. <laughs> no, I am. I am in fact going to start on Bell. I'm going to make Bell an engineer. Pliable attire rearranging apparatus is the official. Name. I haven't That's seen awesome. what they've done with inscript. What they plan on doing with inscription, but if it's not going to be really fruitful, being since they changed the glyphs and all of that stuff, it, being inscription is pretty useless anyway. Uh, and the Vantus runes were great, except they fill a need right then and there, and it's not really an ongoing need. Um, and I didn't make any money off doing Vantus runes, so I feel like I'm going to switch my inscription up because I need to transmog anywhere. And uh, scribes haven't been really important for a minute, so... I will not, like, I don't even like continuing to the next raid boss if I put on a new piece of gear, and often I won't put on that new gear until after the raid because I don't want to look weird. Transmog is 20% of your DPS. Yeah, so. it matters, especially yeah. when you're... Even key. your bracers. Transmog is yeah. very important. But I, I do, one of my frustrations, which... Um, it was mentioned in chat that I have been extremely frustrated with inscription because it used to be very valuable and it just feels like it's mm -hmm. just kind of there. Occasionally I'm useful, but it just doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me, but I'm I like excited. how Great Paw is all like, oh, inscription. I'll just like jump all over the screen only for inscription. He's looking for the burrito he ate earlier. <laughs> I know. He thinks you well, have he, he, he threw it on the floor. He didn't eat it. So. I feel like... Did he really throw it on the floor? Yeah, he he opened the box and he just scooped it out and he just tossed it on the floor. That's the cat oh. move, yeah. Now, as the weeks go on and as the beta and alpha and all that stuff goes on, we'll talk and I'll kind of chunk out. Maybe next maybe next episode I'll focus on mounts. I'll just I need to try to pull one focus each yeah. uh, per episode. But there's uh, just a little mention. There's a B mount, which is pretty awesome. Yep. There's also a weapon that's called the honey stick. And it's a mace that has a blob of honey at the end. Now, can you hit a player and the honey will like... I, we don't it? know anything about it. It's just, we just have a model of it. And we're like, oh, this is cool. We need, I need that. So yep. when somebody gets sassy with me, I could just wand them to death with the honey wand. Uh, but I, I do like what they're doing with the mounts, which we'll talk about that next week. I like the models that I'm seeing. I like that they're different. Mm -hmm. I'm really appreciating what they're doing and not just a ton of reskins. So... Regarding regarding professions, guys, focus less on being frustrated about them making the process better and focus more on helping to drive a healthy conversation. So as you're seeing things, what do I always say to you guys? Go to the forums. If you have frustration, put a sound, valid, and logical argument on the forums about a specific subject. Blizzard will read it. They may not listen. They may. It just depends on, you know, if it makes sense for them and, and what they're doing. But... Complaining on Twitter, complaining on Facebook, telling Blizzard I'm re I am canceling my sub because you did X and that made your everything you've done effort-wise for this expansion garbage, basically. That's what you're saying. This one thing made it where all the things that they've done good made it completely useless for you to play. If you are really serious about lobbying for some type of change or something that you want to see when it comes to the new expansion stuff as information's coming out, go to the forums and put your voice out there. It might not get you anywhere, but at least you'll feel, you know, like you are got a healthy yeah. rant out maybe. Just don't be like me when I first learned how to do the forums with World of Warcraft because I said some things and I got banned. But guys, I was really angry. They did some things. They did some things to Bell in Warlords of Draenor and it was just un-freaking-acceptable. So I did 
have a very logical, I had a sound argument and I had really great things, but it was completely overshadowed. Yeah, just, just take a deep breath, like go back and like read the post out loud and then be like, yeah. oh, like, am I embarrassed if anyone heard me saying right. that? Right. You know, and I'll and it. it's like, nobody listens to the person that's yelling. So mm -hmm. I've had to learn to just not do that thing because they don't listen to you. But yeah, I, okay, I, got, so a, I got a band. I'm gonna, all their advice, throw it away. I want to see your rants because it's hilarious on the forums. <laughs> I want to see your rants on the show comments if you're if you're watching this on YouTube or most of you are listening on audio send me an email uh, or send Perk an email send us an email and tell us like tell us how you're feeling rant about it and we're not always <laughs> going to be happy guys it's just is what it is but now I'm really excited that we're going to talk about the Augmont Journal with lore because I feel like Rem's the lore guy I'm more of the PVP the kind of all the other random stuff but I feel like it's a great episode to have Perk on because she did a lot of the data mining and a lot of the, I think there was, um, that might've been you that wrote it up. It might be somebody else who did. The, I know we, we wrote like a little analysis. Like this is what we think it that. means. Yeah. Let, let me actually pull that up right now. Cause, uh, yeah, I wrote that with, uh, one of my, uh, coworkers, Angela. So, so um, yeah. Rem, tell me about this journal that I have been obsessing over since I found it in PTR. So it is written by an ogre that is in the Twilight's Hammer. His name is Ogmot. It used to be Ogmot the Steadfast when he wasn't um, going crazy, I guess. So it's speaking on his travels and what's going on with his brain. But the first page, and it's there's 10 pages, and they drastically get worse and worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. uh, but so... It's just, I was a mere boy fighting at the war camp when the masters first blessed me with their visions. I have come to Silithus to the site of the great wound, seeking wonders beyond imagining. Make me your vessel, masters. So, if you're aware of the old gods, they talk to you if you're special enough. And you sometimes... Because you weapon, you're special? No, even before the oh. like they they whispered to you like Yog whispers the corrupted like Gore Howl from mm -hmm. um, Siege of Agrimar whispers. I can't know. remember the name of it, but it's a very it very like, similar spelling. It's like Zalato. Zalato. Of Zalato. Yeah, yeah, it's Zalato. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But so one of two things happens when they start whispering to you, or you hear the whispers from the void. You either a go insane, or b Illyria, you kind of embrace it, and you're not really able to control it, but it's more of like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a, like a monk, how they're able to be zen, like you're able to- Like you channel it into something. Null it out, yeah. Suppress yeah. it? You're able to nullify it, yeah. Yeah. So you go insane, those are the only options. There's no like- If you're not um, able to really- level yourself off, yeah, you will go insane. Yeah, like we like saw this. in that quest with Alaria where her and Lucas Walker are trying to save some of the Krokul, and they, they really want to be saved, but they just eventually just give in to the Void and you have to defeat yep. them. Hmm. Interesting. So this is when he first starts hearing the, um, the whispers and starts his downfall. Um, but page two, uh, last night I dreamt of two great armadas clashing upon an ocean of blood Shadows writhing beneath them, rising, rising. I smiled in my sleep. Why did the skittering insects have to stir me? Damn those bugs. No matter, we will finish what they began. So this is foreshadowing Battle for Azeroth, obviously with the clashing upon oceans of blood. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of fighting, and I'm really excited about that off topic. But So the shadows writhing beneath them, rising and rising. So... I don't know what you guys wrote, I, um, but my assumption was because the fighting between Horde and Alliance, in my opinion, is caused by Nazoth mm -hmm. using his, um, no, what's this word? Not corruption, but it's more of I think he's twisting them. minds to like yeah, exacerbate he's manipulating the situation. Them. So like everyone is just on edge and like strange things happen. Like Galibix knows that there's Azerite mm -hmm. or like. People think that someone betrayed them, but it's Nazoth. It's like an illusion. Like nerve, like a nervous system type of like manipulation. Yeah, sort of, yeah. Yeah. So the shadows writhing beneath them. So the shadows are gaining power. They're rising. 
but the battle is because of them because it's rising beneath them. And then it talks about the Silithid, and I think that's because the Silithid are gaining power from the Azerite that are that's hemorrhaging yeah. from everything. Also, so the, the wound's really close to Cthune. Like I, I, yeah. I think he's involved somehow. I think this wound has like woken him up, and he's contributing something terrible to the mix. Oh no, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. So the third page, life returns to this dead place. First the bugs came, now goblins skulk about. It is the blood they crave, I am sure of it. Bah, let them have these drippings. Soon there will be enough seas to sate every thirst. So everyone's clamoring to get to Silithus to get these um, pieces of Azurite. And this may be foreshadowing to maybe a future confrontation that we might have over a very, very big pocket of Azurite, or maybe something deep underground that we have not been able to find before that we will be um, being exposed to because of the... You mentioned the uh, conflict. I was thinking of Seething Shore because that's all about fighting over Azurite. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hmm. Which... We're not seeing that because they're, you know, they're releasing that. They're yeah. gating it, right? Little yeah. by little. Yeah. I wonder if something was added to the Seething Shore that wasn't in PTR. Oh. Right? That yeah. That's kind of my theory. You're so... I don't know what that would be. Intuitive. That would be more of like Rem and Perk's territory, but it just feels, mm -hmm. it feels weird that they're like, oh, but if we want to do it with the story. But, I mean, we've seen it in PTR, or did we? What did they leave out in PTR yeah. that... I think there's definitely quests we're missing um, leading up to it. Uh, also, we know that we're getting rid of our artifacts, but we, we know that there's a cutscene, but we don't really know how they go from the current state of things to yeah. giving them up and then going back to fighting with each other. So. Yeah, because we know like what happened at the end, yeah. like when we did the thing, but we don't know the mm -hmm. thing in between. Did you guys... All, this is a little bit off topic, but because you mentioned the quests that might not be added... Did you notice if you fly around the sword, there is a grayed out exclamation point that you can't get to? Oh, I, I, I didn't see that yet. I, I was. I thought there was maybe like an area opened up and then you went down maybe, but um, because they keep on mining. But there's uh, a grayed out exclamation point on the sword. Well, who really looks that high, honestly? Whoa. I no, like it. on the map, it's right there by the sword. Oh. Uh, hmm. But also the wording. Uh, there will be enough seas to sate every thirst. Maybe there'll be another pool of um, arcane magic. Um, let's see. Or maybe when we, maybe we can, maybe, uh, what's a fancy word? Expunge the sword. And maybe thinking, it exposes something. I was thinking that the seas would be like, you know, we've got the Kultura Navy and we've got the Zandalari Navy and like we're going to be mm -hmm. traveling to all these islands and we're going to have enough seas to have even more wars on. Yeah. I want to be on a boat. Like, I want to have my own boat. I want to man Boats my boat. own boat. I want a buccaneer's hat. I want a parrot. I want my own crew. I want a boat that I drive and I go and do the things. You don't drive a boat. Fly whatever. I mean, in Azeroth, we fly them, right? We don't necessarily always have to be on the sea. Sorry, I interrupted <laughs> you, Rem. I'm bad. Sorry. <laughs> So the fourth page, today the smoke rose from my campfire and took form. A shepherd cloaked in the shadows of her past, beloved by a flock of blind sheep. She guided them over a cliff, even as they crashed upon the rocks, they never doubted her. The crows grew fat upon sheep flesh, her laughter echoed all around. So the obvious assumption with the shepherd and the leading blind sheep is Sylvanas. And it's obvious for a reason because it makes too much sense for it. But this brings me back to my, uh, a point that I made with uh, the point the, uh, Sylvanas and Helia made a deal. Helia controls hell. And it says the crows grew fat upon sheep flesh. Oh, no, 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 no. Even as they crashed upon the rocks, they never doubted her. Like maybe she's sacrificing towards maybe Helia. Um, the Loa, um, because uh, Juan Samdi is the Loa of death, he takes in the dead trolls, and actually, he's been taking other lives as well because uh, Wul Jin was his one of his chosen champions. So maybe Sylvanas has some deal because he's uh, Vol Jin said Sylvanas was chosen by the Loa, maybe there's some 
some very, very tinfoil hat thing going on here, but I it's Sylvanas was... leading the horde into the death. So I'm picturing how possessed Sylvanas seemed by the Azerite and how it changes everything. Mm-hmm. So maybe if she tells the end, maybe if other undead see the Azerite, they'll be similarly sort of possessed. And it's like, well, you know, we don't care if we're going to sacrifice ourselves because, you know, like, if we die, we'll feel the power of the Azerite and, like, mm-hmm. the more power to the Forsaken, you know, that are still surviving. Yeah. Um, I knew they're just, like, you know, possessed by the power of the Azerite and just sort of follow its lead and don't really care um, what happens to them. It's for, like, the greater war, the greater good. What if the Azerite the makes good. everybody crazy, like... Yeah. The night As fallen, right? Those guys are crackheads now walking around the city. You have to help Thalrissa because when you first meet her, she looks like she Not anymore. has okay. been super rough. And then she turns super hot after you progress and you do the <laughs> Yeah, they went to the her. halfway house and they recovered. Right, like she went, yeah, to, went rehab. to the spa. Yeah, right. Day spa, rehab, the whole nine. Like they're good. But I feel like I mean, I told Rem a while back, like I feel like the Azerite potentially for one of the factions, like well, it might with power make one of the factions crazy. Even oh Anvin, like the Azerite was all like this weird shadowy, echoey sound effect when he held it, so. Mm-hmm. I want Anduin to be like really dark. I want him to just have a very dark time. I don't know if it'd be like a, a patch or maybe an entire expansion, but I really want to see him struggle on a deep emotional level. I want I mean, all the he lost weight. his dad and did but, the broke war thing. But like, I feel he handled that too good. I feel like he handled it. I mean, I know he disappeared for a while and we didn't really kind of know where he was. We just made an assumption. I think we made an assumption like he was gathering his head and just trying to mourn and figure it out. Mm-hmm. But I feel like he hasn't actually dealt with the weight of the situations that's happened. I don't think he's dealt with his emotions. I think he's kind of pushing it to the side so he can be king. But I really, really want to see him come to terms. I don't think that he's dealt with that death, and I want to see it in a big emotional way. Fly- well, we Candy's getting bit. really mad at me in chat. Look at her. She is mad. I just feel <laughs> we like... see a little bit of that emotion in the BFA cinematic when he's beating on that troll, and he's just full on, like... Yeah, you need every hero has to fall from grace in order for you to appreciate their season for change when they rise up. It is the best type of hero origin story, in my opinion. Okay, I'm getting off my soapbox. (laughs) So the fifth page, the blade's eye watches all. Why do you not see? The first of his lies has been offered. Bound by a throne? No, boundless. The next will come soon. He's talking about Gorbal that's sticking out of the Azeroth. The first of his lies, I don't know if that's referencing Nazoth and the Old Gods, but that's obviously a uh, a callback to Elganoth, his whispers. Um, three lies will he he will offer you. Yep. Who and is he? Did everybody says Anduin? Is that true? Well, well it's, the, it's the boy king. There's another whisper about the boy king, so people think maybe it's related. Huh. It's it's reference to Anduin, be I think because there's many references to him as the Boy King. Gul'dan calls him the Boy King. Uh, I can't remember who said it, but the I Nightborn, can't believe the uh, Nightborn unlock scenario. I think uh, Lorthamar calls him a Boy King. To yes, him. yeah, yeah. You you said it the the Boy's King or something like that. I'd I, have to watch it again. Candy but. just said Rathian, and I voice I thought Rathian when I first read that. Um, yeah. when it was first out of mind, I thought Rathian. Well, yes, but he's not a king of anything. Maybe a king of. Dirt. Well, I mean, didn't death didn't um what's his didn't Deathwing consider himself like the king of something? No, I mean, king of nonsense, maybe. Yeah, I don't think I don't know if they use like the free terminology kings for. And Blizzard specifically has been. Rathian was kind of like an orphan. So. And if they've been calling, yeah. if they've been referencing Anduin as the boy king, it would make sense that yeah. they would make that connection. Um, I don't know what the, a bound by a throne, no boundless. I don't know if that's referencing the boy king or what that could be referencing, but. That's... I mean, I'm thinking maybe how people think the old gods are like bound to different domains. And maybe it's like, no, like N- N- Nazoth's really not just underwater. Like he can screw things up like outside of his realm. Like, you know, you, you didn't just lock him away in Vashir. He is screwing things up everywhere. Yeah, so for instance, people like, oh, we killed Yaxaron, we killed uh, Cthune, but they were apparitions. They weren't 
Right. Their actual body. They yeah. want their full power. Because they're yeah. little bitches. They don't know how to come at us directly. They got to like send yeah. their spirit and whatever their avatars out to fight their battles because they're scared. They should be. We're heroes, they're, guys. It's not that they're scared. They are locked away in some machinations of the Titans. So it's right. more of... And it, it's as reference um, with Nazoth has been poking at his cage and he's able to be on his way out. So we're going to see a full-fledged Nazoth and it's going to be awesome because he's going to be our new overlord. Just accept it. Yeah, we know that Queen Ashara, um, you know, we data mined a model of her and they announced at BlizzCon that like she was going to be a boss in Battle mm -hmm. for Azeroth. So yeah. Nazoth um, transformed her into you know, this Naga type creature. So yeah, she's got like tentacles and like yeah. four arms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like on, on that note, yeah. I really like the new model a lot more than the shadow uh, model that they have for her in the past. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like the, it's like the basic um, Naga sea witch pretty much. Yeah. She, she looks evil. Mm -hmm. Well, and that same thing, Helia is in league with Nazoth. So mm -hmm. could be, some references to her in the future, I hope. Uh, so the sixth page, a band of cultists arrive. Do they comprehend my blessing, my greatness? They speak of Argus, of the one who was awakened, of the victory that went unnoticed. I shared my vision, but the skinny one just laughed. I do not like her. So it's talking about, they spoke of Argus. I don't know if this cultist is a cultist of the Burning Legion or if it's some other Cult. Did you guys notice Maybe anything? Maybe the Twilight that? cultists. Um, well, because he is or doomsayers, even. Yeah, but um, because it says they speak of Argus, but the Twilight's hammer is all about the void and the old gods and those hinky dory whispers. I don't know why hell I said that. <laughs> um, I feel like the victory that went unnoticed is um how you know we think we won but really it was a tragedy how um you know illidan pushed the planet so close to each other that sargeras was in striking distance and the victory is that azeroth is now corrupted and um you know maybe the one that's awakened is Cthune, who got awakened by everything you know happening yeah so yes and no um the the, the victory that went unnoticed is actually in my opinion i would i because as a shadow priest, you have your dagger that whispers sweet nothings to you. <laughs> and I need that dagger because I need my own personal hype squad. So if you can handle <laughs> that, that'd be great. But as you um, enter the seat of the Pantheon, I'm paraphrasing, but she says, we've been trying to get into this realm forever to think we have a mortal to thank for that. Oh. So they have access to the Pantheon now. So that and my, that's what I that's what it called to me as the the victory that went unnoticed was the fact that they now have leverage just like they got into the Emerald Dream, so hmm. it, it could be causing right. a lot of shit. Yeah, and it's also like you know when you start the fight, it you know Sargeras is like you know rise Argus, rise champion. So mm -hmm. it's like he was this dormant uh, tortured Titan, and they were able to awaken him. So maybe that's something special. Maybe there yeah. hasn't been something happen like that in a while so it's cause for um celebration it might even bring um, bring forth uh irony for sargeras because his whole objective was to get rid of the void yeah. and he, he essentially helped them win so mm -hmm. yeah that would be cool if they're like in pat i don't know 9.0 and 10.0 it's like oh well like sargeras and everyone else is gonna band together to fight the void now <laughs> like sargeras is actually on our side that would be really really weird but yeah. i'd be down uh so the seventh page many days have passed without a vision have i displeased you masters i will leave you a sacrifice remember me this one isn't really significant it's more of just he's going insane from the fact that he's not hearing the whispers of going insane yeah and he's gonna start killing people because sacrifices make everything better so blood, more blood for the yeah. blood god yeah they do make everything better. Don't you yeah. sacrifice on mm -hmm. the weekly basis, Rem? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see. I told you. Mm -hmm. So the eighth page, the star peers down. I must hide from its glare. The dagger spoke true. It has been too long since I was drowned. Do not forsake me, masters. The star peers down. I think this is the 
red star that's up in the sky at the moment. Yeah. When Sargeras gets pulled to see the mm-hmm. Pantheon, there's a flash yeah. of light. The red shows up. So maybe that's maybe, I don't know, causing UV rays for him. I don't know. But the dagger uh, spoke true. So he's been, he's h- held Zalatoth at some point. And that's interesting because we have, um, I, I'm spacing on her name, but when you're doing the Shadow Priest and you learn about um, the a human female that held the dagger and Anatomy, wrote about it. Celine? Something like that. Yeah, Celine yeah. or something other. Yeah. And then Moria also um, knows about the dagger. And so at some point he held a dagger and knows about it and she spoke to him and obviously he's not useful at all. So she passed on and went to someone yeah. else. And the but, dagger's um, history, they it, it just sort of shows up and no one knows how it's there and then it just sort of yeah. vanishes. <laughs> so it's almost like the one ring. It's yeah, it, it runs away from Gollum. So I mean yeah. and then he says it has been too long since I was drowned. Um drown yourself in the circle. Circle of stars. stars. Do yeah. you you know about the heart of Azeroth and you go down and you see the tentacles up above you? Yeah. 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 In the in the maelstrom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting how maybe there's another way to drown yourself. But um, because I don't know how would he get to there. I mean, I'm looking for other ways. So I feel like Ogmont might be able to help me out there. Yeah, maybe. So the ninth page, the bones were picked clean, yet still I am granted no insight. The others scoff. They question my devotion, but I am the chosen vessel. I will not lose faith. Another sacrifice, yes, one more of them will not be missed. The bones are picked clean. I don't know if he's eating people or what's going on with that. But uh, uh, Yeah, he's, he's killing all of his cultist friends. And, yeah. Know, I'm picturing vultures kind of eating these bones. So. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. There are vultures. In I took it as like showing the passage of time, like, hey, I killed a person and I put them on this altar hoping for a vision. And it's been so long that there's no more things for anyone to eat it'll disintegrate it it's really gross (laughs) yeah so that one's just him going more and more insane which is humorous (laughs) because so the 10th page and the last page roused by her screams stirred by her whispers a blessing from the masters at last i understand a door a path hours hours fool the circle has awakened us all so Someone's speaking to him, but it says stirred by her whispers. Old gods don't have a quote unquote gender. Right. They are gender fluid. So you know, okay. I don't know. But uh Yeah, we gotta be PC because we don't want to add that to the list of people we've offended. We gotta on the have show. gender neutral bathrooms too, okay? Perk, we have a but, list uh, running for the last four years of, of members of society we've uh, insulted or offended with something we've said, and so now we have to add that to our list. Well, I was going to go in a different direction with who I think. I, I think that I wonder if he's roused by Azeroth screaming. and That's what uh, I was thinking, yeah. And the whisper is like, you know, Magni was, Azeroth is whispering and saying things about nightmares she's having. So I, I wonder if that's what, um, you know, he's hearing because he's obviously so close by to Azeroth who's very annoyed. And then he talks about a door, a path that could be either the city of Pantheon or the fact that Azeroth is so weakened that they have an end to corrupting her, possibly. Yeah, the Azerite is like the door. Yeah. Hmm. But the circle has awakened us all. That one, maybe circle of stars, maybe... Like that like could said, be the seat, because it's it, it's literally a circle. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. literally a circle. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, that's... A lot of foreshadowing, a lot of stuff that may not, might not make sense right now, but when we see it in the future, it's like, now it makes sense. But there's a lot of good stuff, and it just shows how effed we are, guys. Just accept Nazoth as your overlord. I feel like there's a reason Titans aren't rulers, right? Like, of our planet and stuff. Yeah, they mm-hmm. seem to... I don't know, like they're very heroic, but then they like have a loophole that they kind of forget about and then bad stuff happens. I think they're so passionate about the one way that they feel that it's like, yeah. it's that age old thing where the bad guy, while he had a great heart and he had a purpose for it, he just was a super zealot and was like by any means necessary type of thing. Well, that's 
Sarger, Sarger, Sargeras, like that's him to a T. Yeah. Yeah, like he did this because he he didn't want the planets to become corrupt. He just wanted to like nuke everything and have it. Yeah, let me save you by killing you. Yeah, just like okay, well, you know, this is just going to be a failure. Let's just start over from scratch instead of having. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Well, they have the um, reorigination halls. They have all the means to recreate Azeroth. So I don't know why Azor or Sargeras didn't just poke someone on one of the Titan Forge, be like, "Hey, go do this." But no, he's not that smart. He's smart. He created a whole Burning Legion, endless masses of demons. But no, he he just doesn't choose one guy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, because in the scary movie, they never run outside. They run upstairs. So <laughs> Let's hide where all the chainsaws Bears are hanging. Horror movie, villain. Hmm. That's like the, the Hitcher. Yeah, QT. Super weird. Um, yeah, Good. so Good let's move on. I was going to talk about like what to do in WoW, but I feel like we can do that next week. Because uh, as I predicted, I knew that we... I knew we were in for a lengthy show, and I feel bad because poor yeah. Perk has been sitting at her computer for a really long time. So let's do the guest portion, and I'm going to have her do the gauntlet too, but I feel like it's not going to do I, any good because she, she's going to get all the answers yeah. no, right. No, I'll either get all the answers. It'll be super embarrassing because I'll just be like... It's not going to be embarrassing like, than one of like the answers of like Battle for Azeroth data mining and like I'll just be like after we I don't do know, it's the thing I've been talking for five hours after we do it I'm going to tell you what one of Bajira's answers was because it was actually <laughs> it was actually quite hysterical but arguably he didn't know a lot yeah, about okay. anything because he's just a PvP -er, so it was pretty comical so okay. in my opinion every hero has an origin story right and I feel like content creators especially when they're content creators that have been doing this for the length of time that you have, I feel like with that origin story is probably stuff where people probably don't know. I'm sure there are tons of people who stalk you and probably know your origin story, but I want to know a little bit more about you. When did you actually start playing World of Warcraft? Um, I started playing WoW um, in Classic. Uh, my college roommate at the time was playing WoW and she gifted, she gifted it for me for Christmas and she was a mage and I... I was like, oh, I want to be a night elf and I want to do good DPS. And she's like, well, you know, a rogue is like a mage, except you can be invisible. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. And then I got super sad that rogues are not like mages because they couldn't wear robes. So I was always collecting weird, funny items even before transmog to uh, make my rogue look into all sorts of different things and had this like spy disguise um, persona for her. Um, and yeah, I, um, you know, got really into WoW. I was one of, the, one of the first people on the server that got the Swift Zulian Tiger from ZG. So I felt guilty that I kind of had scrubby gear and I was trying to learn how to, you know, be someone that looked really cool when you would inspect them in Ironforge. So I got more into raiding and like maximizing DPS, um, became a guild officer, actually got a lot of Realm Firsts, even Realm First Rogue and like Yogg and Lich King. And was going pretty hardcore until my guild had some attendance issues, which was around the time I started doing more um, with Wowhead in Cataclysm. What brought you to that? Because I always think, I don't really remember where it led from me just being a, kind of a casual player to it literally consuming 24 hours a day of my life. Like, even in my normal job, because I do have a real job, it's still pretty, like, all-consuming how do you remember, like, when you decided, okay, I want to not just be a player, just but... Just dive in fully, yeah. yeah like, I want to do... I want to make content. I want to help other players, which is how I started. Is I wanted to help. I wanted to help others do. Um, so, if you... I don't... I mean, maybe ancient people remember this. Back when LiveJournal was a thing, there was a community called WoW Ladies. Um, and, like, I would... I had, like, a normal emo LiveJournal blog. And then I also had one that was tracking progress for things like you know, the insane or like, yay, I formed this mount today. And I had fun helping people. And one of my friends was like, hey, like, you know, like, you know, you, you explain things really well. And like, I do stuff at Wowhead, you know, do you want to start volunteering and, you know, kind of change your blogs into guides? And I'm like, hey, yeah, that sounds pretty fun. So I started volunteering around the time um, I was kind of looking for jobs and kind of like in between transition stuff. And like, you know, WoW was super popular at the time and it felt really good to 
write these guides and, you know, get a lot of validation and be helping so many people. And it was such a positive experience compared to, you know, other things that I was sort of struggling with. So I kept wanting, you know, to do more and more and, um, you know, just, just got super into the idea of like organizing information and presenting it better and kind of sharing my love with the game with a larger um, amount of people. And Wow had let me do that. That was actually... Yeah, that was good. Yeah, and I was like, been. man. Uh... This was before like Twitch and stuff too. I feel like it would be different now, but you know, right. back then it was sort of just like, Twitter was like very small and you know nobody which, really understood Twitter you just like send things out into the void and like yeah. nobody understood that whole Twitter culture and now it's like that's the go to I just remember the old commercials where it was like the parents sitting on the porch with Twitter that was humorous I'm sitting on the porch that's not how Twitter works dad <laughs> I identify a lot with um like your feelings about things because I think naturally when you do stuff like this uh, especially like when you podcast along with it or you know what whatever other avenues you're doing I feel like you get to share that passion with other people. And I believe that there's a huge power in information. And when I say power in information, I don't mean like we're all mighty powerful because we know stuff you don't. It's just a very empowering feeling to be able to take someone who doesn't have time to read all the news or do all these things. They they log in. They I had people in Guild yesterday that didn't know anything about the pre-purchase. And I'm like, what? How can you yeah. be my guild? <laughs> How are you alive right yeah. now? When but I started with Wowhead stuff, it was like, you know, midway through Cataclysm, and I really missed old parts of the game. So I felt it was really important that I, you know, explain why the old parts were cool in, you know, these blogs and kind of document all of that. Um, and then when Transmog became a thing, I'm like, oh, I've always been collecting all this armor. Like, let me make all these Transmog sets to, you know, dive into the weird old quest items and actually show what matches, not just, you know, the fancy tier stuff. Um, yeah, I've noticed you, you guys do that a lot. Whenever, like, the Allied Races came out, like, oh, here's something that really works thematically Oh, for thank them. you. Yeah, I had fun or, doing yeah, it over the cool. holidays. Like, that's always my baby. That's sort of when I became, when I sort of transitioned from volunteer to more paid staff. So, like, transmog and doing cool things with the model viewer is kind of like my baby. Mm -hmm. Kind of like... You Listen, know, what I, do. I don't want to call Wowhead out, but I'm going to tell you that I tried for a really long time to be a part of Wowhead because I was trying to get an outlet for all my good stuff. And I'm just saying, I was very hurt at rejection. Aww. I'm over it now. It was, it was years ago. I'm good. Like, we are, we're well, going to be all right. Yeah. I, I highlight your stuff on the blog now. You do. You love me, and that's okay. But, like... Yeah, I tried, guys. I we tried have, like, to be we all like a better be. front page now, so like we can actually highlight more people now instead of like you know a empty front page with a little box being like search here. So um, yeah, it's actually we, looking pretty spiffy. Um, and I've maintained, you know, the the data mining is good. Spoilers are a little frustrating, and I'm wondering how you feel. Like I, you, I'm sure you probably get angry people of things that are data mined. I don't necessarily agree with all the data mining stuff as far as it being public. Like, I think that there's some things that we as players should experience in game without seeing that. But then I know there's a large player base that has to know all of those things. Do you feel any <laughs> kind of, um, I don't want to say like moral because it's not like it's immoral, but do you feel any kind of way about maybe sometimes too much data is presented where it kind of takes away that magic from the player discovering that in game? Or do you feel like yeah. it's a good balance? Like, how do you feel about it personally? I mean, it, it's tricky for me because I feel like I kind of walk a tightrope um, with stuff. Um, so I think that, you know, if Blizzard is going to show something, my job is to present it in the most educational way possible, which is like not being clickbaity or I, I don't want to create misinformation. Right. Um, and I also feel that there are some things you can do, like if Blizzard clearly doesn't want you to see something. They'll make that, it where you can't. Yeah, so like trying to really work around it is not really something I want to do either. For example, like, you know, on the PTR, um, the Silithus Sword was like a cube at one point. And it's like, well, I'll just let it be a cube and I'm not going to try to do something to find a way to, I don't know, stick the sword in the image because Blizzard doesn't want to show that and I'm going to respect it and I'll Got wait it. for that review. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so I think that class stuff is really valuable, especially because Blizzard has kind of slipped on posting patch notes. Um, and I think that that can help a lot of people do math and hopefully polish the game before it goes live. Um, and I think if I'm doing anything with speculation, I should really research it. I think a lot of that is fun and more interesting than just like a raw data dump of stuff. Um, 
but yeah, I, th I think mostly it's fine. I think that if I can present something in a way that's hype and generates more content creators having discussion, it's good. I try to make an effort to have kind of boring images, especially if it's a spoiler post, like, I don't even think I'm calling, whenever I talk about Silithus for like months, I was never calling it Silithus. I'm like, there is an environmental change. After it <laughs> There's first. a thing that's happening somewhere. Or I would like super zoom in on the sword being red because I didn't want people to see the sword, the sword sticking out of Silithus. So um, I, do, I do try to make some traffic trade-offs to respect the spoilers or at least, you know, put the spoilers in a separate post, you know, say spoilers in the title, say spoilers in the Discord bot description, say spoilers in bold in the preview, give it a boring image, hope people still click on and I didn't put them to sleep. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is a tightrope between, you know, like, like I said, like the, like the Silithus when it was a, a cube was a good example because I know some people were like, oh, like I'll just, you know, circumvent that and show right. the sword. And I was like, no, well, I'm not going to do that because Blizzard is sort of if they went out of their way to block it, then there's a reason. Yeah. And that like, makes sense. Even, there's even stuff that wasn't super crazy that we've taken down that they've asked us to. For example, Blizzard didn't realize that the Gul'dan cinematic could be accessed when 715 went live. And they're like, hey, we kind of screwed up. Like, can you take this down? Like, we don't want to be discussing this at the start of 715. And I was like, well, you know, I respect that. You know, I can just, I don't care. I'll just take the post down, take the video down. Um, so if there's something I feel is weirder that maybe Blizzard doesn't want to be shown, I'll be like, hey, like, we found this. Are you, d did you know this was findable? <laughs> you know, I, I sort of nag them a lot about all that type of stuff. You're nicer than uh, me. You're like, you're way nicer than me because I don't know that I would have asked. Yeah. On I that note, were... really ahead, quick. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm cutting you off. I apologize. But oh, no, cool. uh, the finding things, uh, what was your reaction when you guys found the cool terrorist armor? Really oh, that on. was super cool. Um, <laughs> that was, uh, I was, I was just like, oh my god, this is the coolest thing ever. I think I found the expansion. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know, that was a pretty awesome moment, piecing all that together. At first, I was like, oh, you know, this is cool. And then I was like, oh no, it has the same like phrasing as the quest uh, items from Warlords, and it's like. Oh, like let's actually pull up the models. Oh, you know there there's a you know there's a map on it and there's a, there's a tentacle on it and it was like it just kept growing in how cool. It was. As you're looking closer, it's like oh, shit, there's actually more to it than than I thought. <laughs> yeah, sorry about the thing falling with the cat. Um, but yeah, and it was also a really cool day because that was the same day we got the dialogue that spoiled the end of Antorus. Um, so it was like oh, we're just like dropping all these like bombs left and right here. <laughs> Uh, I was like, I was like, could I do that? Like, you know, what was I meant to post what happened to Illidan? Like, uh, but yeah, I try to, you know, not spoil stuff at the front. It's everyone that has like a different threshold. Um, but I try to, you know, organize the dialogue so it sounds cool. Or if I'm doing something that might seem out of left field, like try to explain my thought process, like how I came to the conclusion that the cool to us icons were related to the expansion instead of just making a statement out of thin air um and uh yeah just trying to do a really quality job and try to analyze things well and hopefully still have it be educational um at the end of the day and tying to blizzard type instead of you know trying to you know pull a fast one on them mm -hmm. that was a very very good answer i tried to barbara mm -hmm. walter hers right now guys and she wouldn't even let me do it because she had the perfect freaking answer man I mean, I've been thinking about it a lot with all this Battle for Azeroth stuff. It's like, oh, you know, well, like, we can data mine stuff, but, like, we can't. Like, and that's what I wondered, like, do you, or, is it yeah. difficult for you? Like, that's, I was really, that was really one of the questions. But I was telling Rem yesterday, I was like, I'm going to Chris Hansen her, and I'm going to pop out and be like, you're busted. But then, like, I mean, it, it makes a yeah. lot of sense when you also get yeah. to control that. And if you're responsible in your journalism and in your reporting, then you're, you're setting that bar and that tone um, yeah. Like, do well, you hate thing. that you get it spoiled for you? I mean, it's, I, I just sort of come to the conclusion that I am on a different time schedule. So like PTR is sort of live to me. So when the PTR says, I'm like, oh, like, you know, 735 is live for me in November. Um, so it's like, I, I just view it in the mindset that like, I'm going to play this new patch like two months before everyone else. Um, so that way I feel like I'm just being spoiled at the right moment and not early. Yeah, I had to adjust to being that guy in PTR and get doing stuff for the show and for the yeah. stuff for Method. Like, it was hard for me. I'm 
because yeah. I don't want to be spoiled. But then I realize that's just the nature of what you do. And yeah. sometimes you just have to, you just kind of have to It's also a really okay cool it. rush. Like sometimes, yeah, you might be sad that you don't like experience the spoiler with your guild, but then it's like, oh, you know, like I just stared at this pile of a thousand items or, you know, like I stared at 300 lines of dialogue and I found the one dialogue that's the big spoiler. And like, I feel really awesome. Like I, you know, defeated a mythic boss because I was the one that, you know, found this thing with my coworkers and we had awesome teamwork and mm -hmm. now we have a really cool scoop and like I can control how we post the scoop and, you know, I can control how the hype starts. Like that's just a really cool feeling. Yeah, for me personally, I, even before I was on the show, I personally love spoilers. I like seeing what's up ahead and it's not like opening a present. I, it, that doesn't matter to me. I just like knowing uh, but like, for instance, with BFA, I've read a lot of the dialogue and I see how we get the Dark Iron Dwarves in the story. And it's actually, I, I like being spoiled personally. <laughs> yeah, everybody likes to be spoiled by me gifts. But seriously, I, the, what I am glad, I'm glad that Blizzard removed the cutscenes because that really is yeah, the that only is thing one I thing. truly yeah. cared about is I like that feeling of experience. Yeah, the we, um, game. like, we obviously knew how to do it. And we're like, yeah, we don't think this is, it was something we decided not to pursue at all. Um, especially after we over communicate with Blizzard about every cutscene since the Gul'dan thing, we're just like, yeah, is this you okay? know, like the actual like beta isn't up, and um, based on past precedent with how Blizzard has handled zones with other fan sites, like I remember back in WAD, they were like, how did you get to Spires? And I'm like, oh, I far sighted, and they're like, oh, well, like that's not open on the PTR. Oh, yeah. I remember when Cataclysm was first going to get released, people were using um, Eagle Eye with hunters to go over the mountains and actually see the desert from Yeah, so like, Eric, they were yeah. asking me about that. So it's like, you know, I'll just like really, you know, be boring if I lose a post because it's not like cool enough. It's not, I, I'll, I'll just, I just try to stick away from things that make it seem like I'm playing the game or would need a copy of the game to log on and, you know, trigger a cutscene. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, there, there's some things like zones and, um, some cutscenes I sort of just shy away from also cause you know, like part of Wildhead is like submitting comments and screenshots. So I think it would be kind of strange if we were like, oh, you know, like here's a picture of a zone that you can't get to. Cause it's like, no, like that's weird. And yeah. Like, you know, like how come the user has to like go grind out the mount or right. go see the zone, but like, we're just being like, ha ha, like we're better than you or just doing stuff you know, different stuff to get to it. So I always wondered how, cause yeah. I know I, I do all my, everything. I don't do a guide or I don't talk about it unless I, I've been through it myself, especially for like hard to do stuff like lucid nightmare. I didn't really go in depth with that until I actually did it myself. Yeah. Cause I like, and I think a, a lot of, I see a lot of your, your guys that write stuff. They, I know that they go in and do it themselves, which I think that that is super important that you have that firsthand experience when you're, if you're giving information, you really need to know, um, what that means. What is it? How does it feel when you're doing that information? Did it feel easy? Did it feel hard? Was this quest this or was this quest that? I think those kind of things are nice. So, Yeah, I mean, there's so much stuff that you can't just get from data mining, like really simple stuff like, you know, how do I get to the instance or, you know, like there's a mob in, in the way or uh, this NPC is in a cave. Like if you were just, you know, reading an article or data mining, you'd be like, this instance, you know, is located in Argus or, you know, like this NPC is at coordinate 4060 and like you don't get that extra knowledge of like, yeah, he's at 4060, but like down a cave or yes, it's an Argus, but like you have hey, to like- By the way, the lava. cave entrace is on the other side right. of the zone. <laughs> yeah, like you just, right. you need to actually play um, to have it be like an, an enriching, valuable guide and understand all the annoying little things that users face that make them stressed enough, you know, to look up something on Wow. Yeah. And give them the, you Flashback know, thought bot. ninety percent of my ninety percent of me being able to figure something out is usually from comments on Wowhead. That's, I mean, the players that are have been in there and done that, and they have the waypoints for you, and they tell you, okay, don't do this thing because you're going to spend an hour and a half banging your head against the keyboard because this thing's not going to work. So instead, do this thing. And I, I think that the players driving the community in that has always been a really good thing. And I loved Thoughtbot. Uh, by the way, it was like my favorite for everything. Yeah. We are trying to bring, we're trying to have different skin backgrounds on the site. So when we get to classic Wellhead, we can maybe have an option where like, it looks like ThoughtBot. Um, so that would be cool. I'd be down. Yeah, ThoughtBot was the business. Like anytime you had a question, somebody would tell you ThoughtBot and you just knew that it yeah. was going to tell you everything you needed. Uh, and then the final question, and then we're going to get to the gauntlet. 
Do okay. you still have your WoW magic? And I know you're probably going to say yes, because who in their right mind who content creates for WoW does not have the magic. But do you find that magic? And when I say magic, that feeling of when an expansion is live and you're doing stuff in game and that it's that weird zen happy type of feeling it's like a tingle and a sparkle and it's this like excitement where like every year every expansion i take a week off work and it's just for expansion stuff do you still have that do you find you have to you have to make yourself have that does it do you ever lose it i mean yeah i think i i think i mostly have like i always seem to recharge around blizzcon like um i never really do the opening ceremony i just sort of like I don't know, I just kind of like being a player and just kind of having the opening ceremony as my time where I can just like wander around at the back of the room and be like, oh, wow, I'm a player. Like, it's so cool I'm here. And just kind of like take it all in and kind of be awe-inspired and like not have people coming up to me or recognizing me and just kind of like sit on the floor and like watch everything, you know, with my mouth open. Um, so, you know, just kind of like, you know, with shock and awe. Um, and yeah, I mean, I feel like on the PTR, like, you know, I'm, I don't know. It's just, it's just like, it's just like the Zen kind of energy flow where it's like, I'm super excited. I find something and that's how I decide I'm going to write this cool article sharing, you know, my, my interest in something. Um, it's like, it's like, I really like this so much that, you know, I'm going to post this really detailed, you know, niche article on Wowhead. That's not, you know, class changes. I'm going to post about like void elf transmog or, you know, how a bunch of uh, items in the game have names like poetry. Like, I just, I don't know, I get really excited. Something that's, something that's emotional yeah. and special to you that you connect yeah. with. Yeah, oh. and it's like, I love Pepe. Like, Yeah, um, we know, you're obsessed. Yeah. Obsessed. Yeah. So, <sighs> He's devil know. incarnate, so, no. No, I'm good. he is. Well, maybe he is. I think Pepe, maybe Pepe is the old god. Because he's always watching us. That actually seems kind of valid. He sits on our head. He's the only other character besides alternate Gul'dan that came from Draenor to the main universe. Um, he's in Silithus. I never uh, connected the dots with it with Draenor being an alternate timeline. Yeah. Huh. So he is one interesting. <laughs> Murky bird. said you spelt Murky wrong. Murky thinks he's <laughs> the best. Uh, oh no. Murky and Pepe should have a fight, like an octagon ring fight. Two man enter, one bird. Murloc leave one well, animal. Pepe now has the diver's helmet model in Basil. I Battle saw that Battle. earlier. I saw. So I was. He can survive a fight in the water. Let's do it. All right, now gauntlet time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let me prep the gauntlet. Hopefully, so you have one minute. Okay. And it's just rapid fire. I'm just gonna sit. I'm gonna say the questions. If you don't know the answer, I really think you're gonna get all of them right. Just say pass. <laughs> uh, where are they? All right, guys, are we ready? Okay, let me put this. I'm gonna put it over here because I want to see your face when this is <laughs> happening. Um, and then I, I, I think I'm gonna like instantly. We're gonna just be like. Battle for Azeroth. I am so scrambled up. <laughs> so. Everything Pepe and Bright Paw. Yeah. All right. Ready? Okay. We have one minute. I think the gauntlet music runs out, which you won't hear the gauntlet music, <laughs> but everybody else will. All right. Ready? And name four of the six Shahs. Uh, Shah of Fear, Shah of Pride, um, Shah of Anger. No, it's not Shah of Happiness. <laughs> um, it's Shah of, <laughs> of Violence, I think. No, I just, that's the third thing I thought of. Um, Shah of Hatred. I think, I think I, yeah, it was the four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what weapon did High Lord Morgrain wield? Um, Ashbringer. Who did Illidan fight in order to claim the title Ruler of Outlands? Uh, oh uh, wait, Kel, Kel, <laughs> why am I looking up? No, <laughs> <laughs> we stopped no. you. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I'm just thinking of like Illidan has fought everyone right now. <laughs> like he's fought Arthas, he's fought Goldan. Who was fought... Medivh's father? Um, it was Aegwin and Sargeras. Okay. Yeah. That was actually 
I pulled the sex. So I have two versions of these. And I pulled the second version. I pulled the okay. slightly harder one. Okay. So don't feel too bad because I did that on purpose because I figured. But the Shav happiness was amazing. So Bajira said the Shav disappointment. And <laughs> I was laughing so hard that like my face was red. And even now when I think about it, I giggled just because he was so sure that it was the Shav disappointment. Uh, God, that was good. So... Come on, Great Pops. Come the on. Shaws were right. Ashbringer's correct. Um, I'm not going to say this name. Okay. Magr Magthorodon. Rem, help me Mag out here. Magthorodon. Oh, Man, I for, like. How is he's like, he's like a tier four shitty boss? I forgot he existed. And <laughs> like, uh, you just kill him early on. Aran was Medivh's father. <coughs> uh, but Sargeras was there too. Like he possessed stuff. That's well. Yes and no. He was a inside her stomach or also uterus. I don't know. Correct. I feel like he had two fathers then. What do you think, Bright Paw? Oh, you never talked about Bright Paw. You were named after a cat and wild Bright Paw. Yes, I wonder if Bright Paw knows that he's famous. I, I've, sh I've shown him the model. So now you can tell people that Bright Paw got his own NPC. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll yes, totally did. believe it. You got your own NPC. So you did super good. Uh, that's really funny. Your face was classic. I hope someone <laughs> clipped that. Uh, definitely need to make sure that I highlight that. But I did want to thank you. I know you had a long day, and I thank you for coming and talking nerd with us. I knew it was going to be a lot of deep discussion uh, because you're like us. We uh, Really quick, because uh, Bajira got this question correct. I want to know if you're going to get oh, no. the correct answer. Who is the Eridar boss? Who, who is the Eridar boss in the Trial of the Crusader? Um, oh, Lord Lord Jaraxxus. Thank you. Okay, we're good. He's obsessed with Jaraxxus <laughs> because you face Jaraxxus. Mm -hmm. So he was no stone toy that, that, that Gul'dan drops. So, uh, thank you for being here. I had a blast, and I am thankful that you gave us some of your time because I know you're a very busy lady. How can people stalk you? Although they see your Twitter, I'm pretty sure everybody knows where to find you, but let us tell us where they can find you. Uh, you can find Twitter at Perculia. Um, I do Wowhead Weekly every uh, Thursday at 2 p.m. with Annie Fuchsia. Um, we talk everything on Wowhead in the past week. Sometimes I'm trying to do more. Um, I'm on Twitch TV Wowhead, just talking about any developments, trying to get more into that. And yeah, just check the front page of Wowhead. We have a Discord webhook that just alerts you whenever we post news. We have a Wowhead Facebook. We have Wowhead's Twitter as well. And but yeah, just you know, me on Twitter is probably the most obvious place to find me. Uh, Wowhead has a Discord as well. We do giveaways there. Yay! For those of you um, listening on audio yay. and watching this later on YouTube, yeah. it will be linked in the audio and on the YouTube as well. All the all the Wowhead appropriate links for you guys to all the go and do the cha-cha. And if you've ever met her in real life, she's super tiny. She's like super tiny. Like yeah. I can put her I'm in not, my I'm pocket. Not five feet tall. Yeah. yeah, she's super adorable and I could totally just put her in my pocket because I post lots of cat pictures as well as costume fashion pictures. Oh, I was say, you do a lot of that. Yeah, because um, Perk has a little bit yeah. of an emo side to her and sometimes that does come out. She's got a little bit of an emo side. Yep. That's and right, I've though. got this adorable baby cat who's now on the screen. Aren't you a baby cat? Well, guys, we are going to go ahead and get on out of here. Bright Pod needs attention. My <laughs> whole house is quiet, so I don't know who's dead. Oh, someone's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and giving us your hour, two hours and 20 minutes today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to go get on out of here. Of a, a little bit of a show, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she calls a perky goth. <laughs> you really are strangely perky, but you do borderline emo a little bit. That's an interesting combination. You know, I, I do have a lot of goth stuff. I have, like, black curtains in my bedroom and a lot of... Hot but you're not broody at all. Now. You're not, like, a sad, depressed person. You're super, like... No, I used to be super sad as a Oh, were you? And yeah, well, I, I was like, and then it's like, oh, well, now I can just, like, buy all the emo looking stuff because I'm an adult now. <laughs> and, like, not be emo, so you get best of both worlds. Because you gotta I'm be an tell adult. Tell me what to do. <laughs> because I'm an adult.